this awesome Kashiyama suit. We're going to break down all, some free agency targets here for the Dallas Cowboys. Several of them you guys have already thrown into the live chat. Some of them you haven't, but we'll break them down. Remember, guys, you can still sign players. That is what's still going on. So before we dive into the players, I want to mention where the needs are right now. Defensive end, defensive tackle, safety, cornerback are some of the big ones right there. Which, by the way, defense. That's the big area of focus for your Dallas Cowboys. Receiver, by the way, especially wide receiver three, also a key area of focus for Dallas. So we're going to begin with defensive end, a name many of you have put in into the comments section. Devian Clowney. I've said this before. We said it like a day ago. I don't know. Time blends together during free agency. I don't even know what day it is anymore. The Cowboys are not going to be interested in Clowney unless his price drops significantly. Clowney was asking for Tank Lawrence money or more. He's not going to have interest in that. Well, the Cowboys are. There's no way they're going to pay that. They're just not going to. However, Clowney's market hasn't been what he wanted it to be. Now, if Dallas wanted to, they could afford him. But the question is, at what point do they want to afford him? Clowney only had three sacks last year. Now, if you foolishly only judge production on sacks, you think he sucks. He doesn't. He's a good player. He's not DeMarcus, even as good as DeMarcus Lawrence is. He's not worth $20 million. I'm not paying him that. If it comes down to 16 17 15 Hey, I started kind of having some interest at that point. Now, where things sit right now on the Cowboys' defensive line, you can very clearly see there's some needs there. You got, I think, two starters for sure locked in. Very clearly, Demarcus Lawrence, Gerald McCoy. Well, Antoine Woods could be back. You can start him if you need to. Tyrone Crawford, frankly, he might be your best bet, guys. It's not a great group out there. Now, one guy I would love to pursue, and frankly, I think makes a little bit more sense than Clowney, is Everson Griffin. Now, Griffin opted out of his deal with the Minnesota Vikings. The initial plan was to re-sign. That hasn't happened yet. That seems interesting to me. There is, of course, a connection as well for the Cowboys and for Everson Griffin. Namely, that former Vikings defensive coordinator George Edwards is currently on the staff for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, there was a report out of Minnesota that the market for Griffin could be around 8 to $10 million, somewhere in that range. If that's the case, I do have interest, especially if you can structure it as I know the Cowboys can in a very clever way. So for the cost involved, I actually prefer Griffin to Clowney. Now, there are some other defensive end targets in a group that is very, very thin right now overall. It's just not that good. It was thin to begin with, and with a lot of the top players off the market, not too interested right there. The other guys I want to mention, Marcus Golden. You could bring back Michael Bennett. That might be a sensible move here for the Cowboys. Ezekiel Ansah. Those two other guys on the edges there, Golden and Ansah, they would impact your comp pick formula. That's a potential issue there. And Clay Matthews was just cut as well. I don't love his fit, though. Even though there are Mike McCarthy ties, I'm not quite sure how he fits in this Cowboys defense if they don't want to move to a full 3-4 scheme. So who do you want the Dallas Cowboys to sign? Let me know in the comment section. In fact, let me know on the pinned comment. If you're watching on YouTube, you might get an ad break here. So scroll down to that pinned comment. It will be this question. You can cast your votes right there. Let's talk about some offense now because offense is really close to being in fantastic shape, just so we're clear. There is interest, mutual interest, between Emmanuel Sanders and the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Sanders would not be a Randall Cobb replacement. He'd actually be a Randall Cobb upgrade. I have mentioned Emmanuel Sanders for years on this show. Even before the Cowboys got Amari Cooper, I was talking about, hey, can I get Emmanuel Sanders? Now, I had initially thought Sanders' market was going to be too high. It was going to be too expensive. He only really made sense if the Cowboys lost Amari Cooper. But maybe Sanders' market isn't as great as I thought it was going to be. He hasn't signed yet, after all. Maybe Sanders could take a $6, 7000000 million deal. Just throwing that out there as a potential option. And then Sanders comes in. He can play slot, can play outside. I'll tell you this. If the Cowboys get Emmanuel Sanders, 
I will put this receiving core up with anybody in the NFL. Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, Emmanuel Sanders, I'll take on any any trio in the NFL. I, I really, truly would. Now, you can still draft somebody, as we'll get into here in a little bit, but if I can get Sanders at a Gerald McCoy-esque deal, even just maybe like it's a uh, two-year 16 or maybe two-year 15 fully guaranteed, I do that in a heartbeat. My issue is I don't know if Sanders ends up doing that. Now, today's show is brought to you by Kashiyama, the smart tailor. They have launched their new modern tailor line, and it's exactly that. It is modern, and you can check it out at Kashiyama1927.com. But this is not your normal cotton, stuffy, heated suit. Anything but, frankly. These are high-performance fabrics, a little bit more like the athletic gear than like that gross cotton blend that gets all stuffy and sweaty that's not fun to, to sit around in at all. It's got wrinkle-resistant fa fabric, so you don't have to iron it every time. And heck, you don't have to pay for dry cleaning. You can throw it in your washing machine. And these suits start at 300 bucks. Yeah, that's the best suit deal out there. So check them out, Kashiyama1927.com. And this one is not the modern tailor line. It's one of the more classic ones. They've got both. They begin at 300 bucks. So check them out at Kashiyama1927.com. I'll put that link, by the way, in the comments and in the description. Next up is Taylor Gabriel. He was cut by the Chicago Bears before free agency began. He's a veteran option. Now, he's not as good as Cobb. He's simply not. He's not going to be that same caliber of player. He's a fine option. But if the options are Taylor Gabriel, you can throw in pretty much any other receiver. I don't think Robbie Anderson's a fit from a price bracket. That's why he's not on there. Gabriel, pretty much everybody else, including Des Bryant, since you guys keep asking in the comment section, why not just draft somebody? And this, this is my question to you right now. What should the Cowboys do at wide receiver three? Draft somebody or sign somebody? I say it's Emmanuel Sanders or draft pick. And by the way, you can still sign Des Bryant and draft somebody. It's fine. But Des has never been a slot receiver in the NFL. Just keep that in mind. So I say draft. You guys let me know in the comments section. But it is a historically great draft class. Back to defense now. And Dominican Sue, the production's dipped. He is not the same guy he was in his prime or even at Franklin, Nebraska. But he does still provide something that the Cowboys could, could use. That's some interior presence and some beef and fatties only applies to Ndamukong and Sue. My expectation for Sue is that he will wait on signing again. We'll see if this gets turned into an erroneous comment in like, you know, a day, which might end up happening. But I think he's going to take some time to make his decision. And yes, you brought in Gerald McCoy. You cannot be done on the interior. Literally, you cannot be done because you don't have enough bodies in there. You have Gerald McCoy. I, I, I can not operate under the assumption that you'll bring back Antoine Woods, but I need more than just Woods, quite frankly. And Tristan Hill. You're going to run out there with three interior defensive linemen? No, no, no. Absolutely not. So I know that there's some frustration over the lack of urgency by a lot of the Cowboys' moves so far. Patience. There will be more moves. Just from a pure math perspective, there literally has to be. And we will keep you updated on all of those moves right here at the Cowboys Report. Hit that big red button and subscribe. We're almost at 51K. Yeah, I went from 50K to 51K super quickly. I haven't hit it during the show. Let's see if we can make that happen. So hit that big red button and subscribe. I promise you guys no one will keep you more updated on the Cowboys free agency and the Cowboys in general than we will right here. You guys knew Snacks was going to be in here, right? I already see the comments coming in. I didn't put him at the first. I wanted to make you wait a little bit because we all know. We want Damon Harrison. At least I think I speak for most Cowboys fans when I, when I say that. I'm sure there's someone out there who doesn't want Harrison because no one in this country can agree 100% on everything. Harrison already lives in Dallas, by the way. My concern here is the price tag issue. Harrison is exactly what the Cowboys need. It's exactly what they need. He's not going to be a great sack machine. But he's going to be a run clogger, a run stopper, can be on the field if you need him on third downs, will probably come off anyway. Damon Harrison is a guy that I have coveted for a while for the Cowboys. In the past, his contract was always too high. It was always too expensive. Now coming off a down year, which he was still better than any Cowboys interior defensive lineman in terms of stopping the run, maybe that could work out in the end. Now, in the past, I've asked you guys to spam sacks to show that we won it. 
different question for you guys today. What's your favorite snack out there? There are a lot of great options. My answer is going to surprise you. It's actually peanut butter. Now, normally at these snacks, I think junk food. I see cookies in there from Triple X. I love peanut butter. I will eat that straight out of the jar repeatedly. My wife hates it when I do it, but I absolutely love it. I see popcorn, Cheez-Its, Cheetos, Gushers. Ooh, Bill D. That's a different question right there. I like that one. Cheetos, cookies, popcorn, chocolate. Patrick, get out of the comments. It's very rude. Uh, Alan, I'm not sure. Oh, Alan doesn't like my comment. I, I, you said yuck. I thought you said something else. I was real confused because you always watch. Paydays. That's not one I thought we were going to see in there. Keep those comments coming, folks, as we move on to Mike Pinnell. Mike Pinnell is the former Chiefs defensive lineman play with the Patriots as well. There is a direct correlation this year for the Chiefs' run defense with Mike Pinnell versus without it. When he came to town, they were much better. There is a Mike McCarthy connection played for Green Bay from 2014 to 2016. So if you can't get Damon Harrison and you're still looking for a big boy on the interior who can play that nose guard role well for you, I suggest Pinnell. I think he's going to be productive. Now, he might be a little cheap. Might not be as good as Damon Harrison. Frankly, won't be as good as Damon Harrison, but he'd be a good addition for the Cowboys. All right, some other defensive tackle targets here. I'll mention Shelby Harris, Derek Wolf. I think that makes some sense. I wonder what if their market's a little bit too expensive, and they kind of strike me more of the Gerald McCoy, Tyrone Crawford role, which could be needed, but I want fat boys. Dontari Poe, Marcel Darius, two names that are big. We know who those guys are. The casual fan knows. They're not the same guys they were in their prime. Don't Let's not forget that. So if they can come in. They wouldn't impact the comp pick formula, I don't believe. But they're not going to quite make the impact you might otherwise think. Now, a reminder, go check out Kashiyama at Kashiyama1927.com. Custom fitted suits takes an hour to get your perfect fit. They start from 300 bucks. It's the best suit deal out there. So check the comments, check the description. That link's in there at Kashiyama1927.com. Let's talk safeties now. You guys knew we were going to get here, right? Von Bell is the first one up. I like Von Bell. If you're looking for a pure, strong safety, he fits that mold. He really does. And he's at his best, by the way, in run support, hence the strong safety. Now, he's not going to go back to the Saints. They signed Malcolm Jenkins instead. There is a connection here. Former Saints LB's coach Mike Nolan is the new Cowboys defensive coordinator. Bell is not going to be a playmaker. And my concern with Bell, even though I like him as a player, is I don't really trust him in deep coverage. And here's my question for you. We don't quite yet know what the Cowboys' scheme will be. My suspicion right now is that Dallas is going to run more single high coverage. That's the path they're going to end, or, or, or excuse me, more quarters coverage, excuse me. That's the route they're going to end up going. I don't think Von Bell fits that quite perfectly. Now, a player who fits it better is Ha Ha Clinton Dix, who's played strong safety and free safety. And I failed to mention this before, and that's that's my fault. Yes, Ha Ha Clinton Dix played for the, the Packers under Mike McCarthy. The ending of Clinton Dix's tenure in Green Bay was bad. He more or less quit on that team. Uh, maybe we'll see if McCarthy's forgiven him for that. Now, he played well for the Bears. We'll see what his market is. But he does bring you some playmaking. I think that's valuable for what this team could use right now, especially given the cornerback position. Two interceptions, three picks, three picks, five picks. Turnovers can be a little a little inconsistent. But three picks pretty much every year of his, of his past four years? Yeah, I, I, I can make that work. A name I do like here that, again, is under the radar is Adrian Phillips, who, fun fact, was an all-pro in 2018. Despite that, he's not going to be that expensive. He's just not going to be. The market for safeties overall, as you'll see in a second, still has some bodies out there. It's not like it's depleted in the same way Edge kind of almost is. He was banged up last year, but I think he fits what the Cowboys could attempt to do. So I think that makes a whole lot of sense for the Dallas Cowboys in terms of what options are out there in the end. 
There are a variety of other safeties who are out there right now that we can get into as well beyond just Adrian Phillips. I see a lot of you guys mention Eric Reed. He's one of them. Again, if you're going to play quarters coverage, if that's going to be more of your base defense, I don't think Eric Reed fits that well. If you want a in the box strong safety, sign me up. Demarius Randall, Anthony Harris definitely fit in that deep kind of quarters coverage role. I will make note on Anthony Harris. He would be a trade target, but the Vikings are shopping him, so I would, I'd include him here. Rashad Jones, Demarius Randall, all those guys are in there as well. Someone mentioned Eric Berry. If he's healthy, he ain't healthy, so I'm not going to include him on this list for that reason. Now we're going to dive into cornerbacks next, but do the Cowboys need one? Type one for yes, zero for no. And as you'll see as we go through a whole bunch of different targets, my answer is one, but the Cowboys do need a corner, but they don't need just any corner. What they need is a number one corner. And that's my issue with the groupings out there. Let's go through some of the top targets, right? Logan Ryan, best corner available on the free agent market. He is not a number one. He also wants 10 million per year. The Cowboys have shown zero interest in paying corners that money, I'm not going to get my hopes up. And by the way, Logan Ryan, he's best in the nickel. I got two guys already doing that role for me in Anthony Brown slash Jordan Lewis. Prince of Mukamara, he's a number two. I got enough of those guys already. I don't need four of the same caliber corner. I am almost to the point where I got to go number one or I'll go draft. Or I'll just roll with my four and focus on it again next year. Xavier Rhodes hasn't been good in two years. Was horrible last year. Ronald Darby always hurt. Tremaine Johnson was once great. Sucked for the Jets. Like he was terrible. Jimmy Smith also once great. Banged up. Not the same guy anymore. I see a lot of you guys mention mentioning Xavier Rhodes. I know the answer is no that you didn't watch the Vikings. That's okay. You're, you're Cowboys fans. I did. He's bad. He sucked. Like, he is not the solution. Akib Tlaib, Brandon Carr were once number one cornerbacks. Not anymore. I'm sorry. Kevin Johnson, eh, kind of more of the same. Nikel Roby Coleman, I like him, but guess what? He's also a nickel. I need a number one guy. I don't see that guy out there in free agency. Let's get down to some live Q&A. First up from C1L2D3. Should we sign Jerron Curse, the former Viking safety, and Derek Wolf? I believe they are both cheap options that could be viable pieces. I think Derek Wolf's, uh, you know, price tag is going to be a little bit higher than you might think. I will make note: Jerron Curse has already signed, so he is—he's not available. I believe it was the Detroit Lions who picked him up. So I would have liked Jerron Curse. I thought his price tag came in pretty fair, but he is now a member of the Detroit Lions, so. You're not going to be able to end up getting him instead. Kelly McMurrian, what about Sue to fill the middle? Would probably would be pretty cheap right now. Again, I think with, with Nindamak and Sue, he is going to wait a little bit. I have interest there, yes. I would prefer Damon Harrison before that. So I, I do have some interest in Sue. And I, I don't want to say this phrase too much because you, you guys will get annoyed by it. But it comes down to at the right price, ATRP. And I, so in the past, Ndamukong Sue has not been that price tag for the Cowboys. Ghostface88, Ian wants to know about Everson Griffin, who we did mention a little bit ago. I, I like the idea of Griffin. I, if I can get him for under 10, I'm all over that. I think that would be a home run move by, by the Cowboys. Griffin is better than Leonard Floyd by a significant margin. So, yeah, I'm going to sign up for Griffin if I can get him for that price tag. Now, we want to mention two things here. First off, we'll get to server's question. This just came across the wire. This is breaking news here. Sean Payton has been diagnosed with what we're going to start calling the Big C because Utah doesn't look like, or, or YouTube doesn't like it when we call the uh, disease that he just was diagnosed with as they don't like it when we say it. So Big C is what, is what it's going to be here going forward. Sean Payton has been diagnosed with this. That is your breaking news right here, the former Cowboys coach on the Cowboys report. That's what Sean Payton has. So wash your hands, guys. I will continue to remind people of that. Now back to server minor gamers question. On a scale of 1 to 10, 
What are the chances of Dez coming back? I'm mm, gonna give it a three or a four. Um, it, it's a little bit. Of course, you you open the door up with Randall Cobb not being back, but I think for Dez, we just mentioned the Sean Payton stuff, right? Sean, P no one's gonna sign Dez without a physical. NFL teams are having a tricky time getting physicals done with people that they trust. That's an issue for Des Bryant, plain and simple. He's coming back off the Achilles here. So three or four, I think, is the chances right now. I don't know. Someone just told me I lost it. I don't know why you're booing me. I'm right. Like, Dez has not been a slot receiver. I think someone will sign him. I'm not convinced it's going to be the Cowboys. I don't know why we're so obsessed with a guy who hasn't played football in two years. The Cowboys never should have cut him. You can still sign him on a one-year deal with no guaranteed money. I'm all for that. But I'm not assuming that Des Bryant solves my issues at slot receiver because you know what happens when you assume. Let's grade stuff Cowboys free agency moves so far, by the way. Obviously, you, you, you got Gerald McCoy. You, you, you tagged Dak Prescott. You got Amari Cooper. You made all those types of moves. You brought back Anthony Brown, Joe Looney as well, mostly the cheap deals. So grade the Cowboys free agency moves so far, of course. A, B, C, D, or F. I, I, I'm in the C-ish range. You can maybe talk me into a C+. Plus. I, you know, I don't, I, I can't give it an A. You've lost too many players already. It's still super early in this entire process. So I'm in that C plus, B minus range. I kind of think it's a, a C so far. All right, some more live Q and A here. This one from Alan Williams. Is Dallas still trying to trade for Jamal Adams. Uh, I haven't heard anything new on the Adams front. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, the Cowboys, I think, are focused less on trading their first-round pick right now. So I think you have to explore other options at the moment in terms of figuring out what your needs at defensive line, edge, and corner end up being. All right, next up from Winston Shan. Do you want to try out Connor McGovern? At swing tackle since Fleming is gone. No, I don't. I don't view Connor McGovern as a tackle. I, I, I think Connor McGovern's fit here is as a guard. Or if you want to make him a backup center, that could make some, some sense. Like, I, I think that's the, that's the route that you end up going. If you want to move any of the guards to swing tackle, it's probably Connor Williams. So... I, now, you can let the Connors compete this year, but I, I, I don't think McGovern is going to end up being a swing tackle. Now, today's show is brought to you by Kashiyama, the smart tailor. Check out their new modern tailor line at Kashiyama1927.com. That is Kashiyama1927.com. Their suits, by the way, start from just 300 bucks. That's the cost of the other major men's chains out there that aren't as good as at Kashiyama. The fittings, by the way, are free. You don't have to, you're not going to be charged for that either. Now, there's a couple. Now, when you get a fitting, here's kind of how this goes, all right? Step one, of course, is you meet your master stylist. I had Nick. She was fantastic. Got me this awesome, perfect fitted suit. They will create you a tailored suit, exactly what you want. The feel's going to be perfect. The look's going to be awesome. And it will be delivered to you in just 10 days. It's a very quick turnaround for just how high quality these fabrics actually are. It's Kashiyama, 1927.com. That whole process, by the way, the fitting, takes one hour. It's Kashiyama, 1927.com. All right, Scott Simpkin says, go get Clay Matthews. He has been released. He has been released. You're absolutely right there, Scott. I am curious to see what Clay Matthews can still have. Now, I know he had eight sacks last year. It's only 3.5 back in 2018. He played well enough for the LA Rams. I don't believe that Clay, I don't believe that Clay Matthews is washed. And because he was cut, I do have interest. I wouldn't mind getting in somebody like Clay Matthews who fits that veteran mold. My initial concern is I'm not sure how Clay Matthews quite fits scheme. Now he's mostly been an outside linebacker. He can throw this hand on the dirt, it's fine. So I would have some interest in Clay Matthews yet. I just wonder if he's truly going to fit the scheme the Cowboys have planned. So of course, we don't know what that's actually going to end up being. All right, Alex Campa. So if we were to draft Xavier McKinney, would we take another defensive guy in the second round or maybe tight end? 
Well, it depends on what other needs you have in terms of on defense. I don't think you're going tight end round two. Guys, you just played, you just paid Blake Jarwin. That move yelled, it should be yelling at you that says, he's our guy this year. I, I don't see why you would spend a round two pick on a not good tight end class. That'd be that would upset me if 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 if, if, if the Cowboys actually chose to go that route. If you go safety in round one, I still think defensive line cornerback are gonna be the main areas you gotta figure out. All right, Destroyer Dog, which cornerback, safety, or DT can help the Cowboys the most? Well, if you're just going on overall talent, uh, and maybe Logan Ryan is the best pure player out there, I I'd still look at Jadevian Clowney, of course, at that perspective. But in terms of best fit, I kind of wonder if Damon Harrison, the guy that I've wanted for a while now, really fits perfectly for the Dallas Cowboys. We're doing something a little bit different on today's show. Follow me on Twitter today, and I will follow you back. We're trying to get to 7,300. We're not that far away. I have complete faith in your ability to get me to this figure, and I would greatly appreciate it. 7,300 is the goal. We are not far away, 29 away. So I'm not going to be able to follow you guys back right now because, you know, we're in the middle of a live show that's super complicated for me. But I have the last person who followed me written down, so I will follow everyone back who follows me during today's show. So go hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny. That link, by the way, is in the comments and in the description. All right, yo, squiggly man. What are your dream free agency pickups and dream draft pickups? Okay. If I could juggle this exactly right, I think I would go I would go sign Damon Harrison. And I feel good about my my starters on the defensive line. I would sign Everson Griffin and now I feel good about defensive end and I'll fill out the back end of my roster here uh, overall and I think I would I would Probably I settle for Christian Fulton, Stan Henderson in round one, Antoine Winfield in round two, and in some bizarre path, KJ Hamler falls to me in round three, and I filled most of my needs. That I think I think that's a, a somewhat realistic dream path here for the Dallas Cowboys. So we'll see if it comes true. Probably not given recent history. But there you go. All right, typical Python trade Cooper. I okay, so I am. I'm just going to assume this is Cooper Rush because if this is Cooper Barrett, just kill me now. Tyron Smith and a fourth round pick for Jamal Adams. You want no? You want to trade Amari Cooper too? I think that's what this means. You're trading away Amari Cooper and Tyron Smith for Jamal Adams? No. And what le what left tackle are you signing to replace Tyron? Well, I think there are some paths in which trading Tyron could actually make a little bit of sense for this team. This is not one of them, my friend. I'm sorry. All right, Jacob Haben, if Jeffrey Akuda falls to eight, would you be interested in trading a second and fourth to get him? I, well, I mean, I assume you, you're including your first rounder in this because there is not a chance in hell that you're getting a second and fourth for a top eight pick. There's just no way. That's not that's not how it works. If if Akuda slides to eight, yeah, I, I'm probably gonna go trade up for him. I think that makes a lot of sense for the Cowboys. I don't think he's even gonna get a top five though. All right, Evan Hildering, do we sign Demarius Randall? I think it's possible. I, I I am so optimistic of the Cowboys finally addressing safety one way or the other, but we also have to remember. This is a, t a franchise, a team that since Ken Hamlin was around, hasn't valued safeties. They just haven't. So, there are so many out there, they got to sign somebody else. Shit, I'll settle for another George I Ioka signing at this point. But, I I would almost, I kind of like the draft guys. I would be okay if, as long as they, take, if they can spend a top 75 pick on a safety, I'll, I'll still be okay in the end. And as a reminder, folks, today's show brought to you by Kashiyama. They got me this awesome custom-fitted suit. You can't tell my name right there inside. So visit the Kashiyama website. It's Kashiyama1927.com. 
Check it out. You can book a free fitting. And all these suits, by the way, start at just 300 bucks. Super chat coming in from Matthew. Wants to know thoughts on Xavier McKinney from Alabama. I like him. I don't love him at 17 overall, but I like him. I think he's a very good player. I wouldn't mind a trade down for him. I think that could be the best path to get him. I wouldn't hate it if he was the pick at 17, depending on how the board ends up falling. Good player, can do a lot of different things for you. You know, I don't like him as a true single high guy, but in quarters or even in some cover two or, or in, you know, against tight ends in the box, hanging around around the line of scrimmage, he can do all, all those things. And I think that's a good path for McKinney. All right, Bill D, what does Dak's future look like? I mean, I think it's just a matter of time until he signs that extension. Again, I don't think that the Cowboys and Dak are too far off. I really don't. I And I, I know I've said this for a while now. I'd be surprised if a deal wasn't done before the July 15th deadline. And if once you get that deal done, the way you structure his contract will actually save you money on the cap versus what his cap hit is right now. No matter how high it is, you'll be able to pull that off. So... I like that path for the Cowboys. We'll have to see what ends up happening. But I, I think that Dak is your long-term quarterback, and frankly, for good reason. He's a really good quarterback. Sorry. All right, Jahir uh, Venegas, what are some trade targets who we can target that we can trade for low draft picks and produce well like Quinn? I mean, you've seen a couple get moved around the NFL. Jarrell Casey is one. Uh, we, we saw Clayce Campbell is another one. I don't see a ton of names out there. I think we'll have to wait and see. There will be some people out there that I think become available maybe after the draft. You start seeing more of those guys become available and become on the open market. So, Jair, it's a great question. We will revisit that in a video, I promise you guys, after the dust settles in free agency and before and after the draft as well. I think that makes some sense. Now, we were supposed to do about a half-hour show. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna override the bosses here if we can get enough yeses. Do you want more Cowboys Q and A? Type Y for yes, N for no. Now our peak comments per minute today, 160. This isn't bad, but those are rookie numbers. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna risk the ire from the bosses here because they want to do some NFL stuff and I get that, but that's Cowboys are a bigger priority. So if we can get enough yeses. To surpass 160 comments per minute, we'll do it. So everybody watching, spam yes so that we can do some more live Q&A here on, the, on America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. So everyone do me a favor as I get a sip out of my mediocre drink. I don't want to uh, uh, alienate the uh, brand here. But everyone spam yes for me. Everyone spam it, and I think we can get to over 160. I, I see 53 right now, Alicia. Is, is there, do you, do you see, oh, I see 167. All right, we did it. There we go. So we'll do some more live Q&A then for you guys. Thank you all so much. We'll go another, another, another little Q&A session here coming up right now. First up in our live Cowboys Q&A, Christopher Lowe, can you trade Dak on the franchise? I think he means hypothetical. What about Demarcus Lawrence? Uh, never liked his performance for, for that price. I mean, we'll have to disagree in terms of the, the price for Demarcus Lawrence. I, he's going to have a bounce back year in terms of raw sack production. He still played really well. His contract is structured in such a way, though, that it really doesn't make sense to, to trade him. If you trade away Demarcus Lawrence, you eat so much dead money that it only makes sense if you're tanking, which the Cowboys aren't doing. As for Dak, you can trade players on the franchise tag. After they sign the franchise tag. Guess what Dak's not going to do? Sign the tag until he gets a long-term deal or until he absolutely has to. Doesn't make sense for him to do it. So that's not going to happen. I knew you we were going to get one. I, I knew we were going to. Sign Todd Gurley. Barrett, you are a long-time watcher, and I thank you. But I, I know you're not the only one who's asked this. You're just the one that Alicia chose to bring up. But why? Why do I need Todd Gurley on this team? Why would I pay money when I already threw a whole bunch at Zeke Elliott and I got Tony Pollard and I barely carry three backs anyway? Just no need for it. All right, Zappo7, if you were to trade Pollard to the Rams, what, uh, what would you want back? Do you think this is a good idea? Eh? 
I don't know. Um, second or a third would be nice, I guess. And I, I guess I don't hate it, but I'm not convinced the Rams. The Rams also don't have any draft picks. So I don't really think you're going to see the Rams trade for a back. Pam Veely. Uh, we have another question coming up here. Uh, will Matthews re play Matthews reunite with McCarthy for cheap and thoughts on linebackers going into the season? So if you go with the – in terms of the fit for Clay Matthews, he's a pass rusher. So he's, he's not going to be an outside linebacker for you. Maybe he'll play some 4-3 Sam, but he's going to get after the quarterback. So I have some interest there. I do. What's the cost look like? I know we put up some sack production. I'm not sure how great he was this past year, but and I think originally maybe I was a little too like dismissive, but I think it, I think it does make some sense actually for Clay Matthews. As for the linebackers, you got Jalen Smith. I think Leighton Vanich is progressing. You brought back Sean Lee. You need depth, like late round draft pick depth and special teamers. That's what you need. By the way, there was a super chat from Saeed Uda. Thank you very much. There was no question with it, but that was a dollar super chat. So, Saeed, thank you very much for that. Akil, if Fulton and Brown are there at 17, who are you taking? I'm taking the better player. I'm taking Derek Brown. I have I have long wanted a 330-pound-plus defensive lineman who can actually pressure the quarterback. That's Derek Brown. I do believe there is a path as slim as it is to getting Derrick Brown at number 17 overall. I, I do believe that is a possibility. I, I'm not calling it a likely possibility, but I believe it is one. So who would you rather take, Brown or Fulton? I like Christian Fulton. Don't, don't get me wrong on that one. But I do like Derrick Brown. I do like Fulton. I like Derrick Brown a whole lot more. All right, Martin Herrera, will the Cowboys get Eric Berry? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, it's possible. They did. They, they brought him in for a, a visit last year medically, but Eric Berry will not sign anywhere until he is checked out medically. He That's going to be tough to do right now in, in the world. That's just the, the reality of this whole situation. So, sure, maybe... I'm also not banking on injury prone. He hasn't played really in two years. Eric Berry being the, the answer. All right, Damian Alvarez. I also want to shout out Alex uh, Villegas, who follows me on Twitter. I know that. I, I know you do there, Alex, who just sent in a, a super chat with no question. Thank you very much. Damian Alvarez asks about Shaquille Barrett. The Bucks franchise tagged him. You're not going to get him. Like, I, I look, if you watched our show this time last year, you guys know I really wanted Shaq Barrett. Now, it worked out fine. You you got Robert Quinn. It, it, it's, it's, it's all been good in the end. You're just not going to be able to acquire Shaq Barrett. The Bucks are not going to let him leave because they're trying to win games with Tom Brady at the helm. So, I, lo I love Shaq Barrett, but I'm sorry, guys. You're just not going to find a way to get that one in. Now, you see there at the bottom of your screen, Sean Payton. Just a quick little note here. He has been diagnosed with what we're going to call the Big C because YouTube doesn't like it when we call it the actual name, but that is some news that that came across the NFL wire like, I don't know, a half hour ago, not even, maybe 10 minutes ago, something like that. He does have the Big C. You guys know what we're talking about, but YouTube doesn't like us to say it because it's too sensitive, but it is kind of a big deal. All right, Adam J., any updates on snacks right now? Uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I, got, I, I got peanut butter right here. Oh, you mean Damon Snacks, Harrison. Peanut butter's my favorite snack. Uh, nothing new yet. It's been kind of quiet on his front. I wonder if there's some medical stuff that could be an issue for Damon. That's really why he's not going forward. All right, we're going to some more live Q&A here. Coming up next on the show is Mr. Payne, 522. Will M. Bennett be re-signed, or will they sign a cheap option like Ravens free agent Pernell McPhee? Haven't really thought about per Pernell McPhee actually very much, but I think that makes some sense for uh, for the uh, for the Cowboys and as a fit, as a cheap fit. I well, I can't rule out Michael Bennett, but I would be kind of surprised if he came back to the Dallas Cowboys. It's not, it's not impossible, but I would bet no more than I would bet yes on that front. 
I am rocking, once again, a Kashiyama suit, and you can get one of your own by checking out Kashiyama1927.com. That is Kashiyama1927.com. You can create your own custom suit, you can explore all their options, and get fitted for free, including their modern tailor line that includes washable, machine washable suits that don't need to be ironed. Yeah, it's awesome. Kashiyama1927.com. All right, Evan Hildering has an idea around the Dallas Cowboys. He says Fulton in round one, Winfield in the second, and Raquan Davis in the third. I'm on board with the first two. Raquan Davis in the third is fine. I'd rather have Lecky Fotua, who I think will also be there. I know that Raquan had that great sophomore year with like seven and a half, eight sacks. He hasn't been good since then. Like, I, I think I don't think that's a real outcome here in terms of in a, as a third round being a, a good fit for the Dallas Cowboys. So I I love the first two picks. I wouldn't hate Raekwon in the third. I just wonder if you could find a way to get a little bit better player in the end for the Dallas Cowboys in that third round as a particular option. So not the worst idea. I like the first rounds a lot, but I think it's good. John Sparks, why haven't we signed Ha Ha Clinton Dix yet? Well, A, it does take two parties to sign. B, I know he has ties to Mike McCarthy, and I probably should have done a much better job of mentioning this in the past, and that's my fault, guys. The ending of that tenure didn't go too well, and also the Cowboys historically haven't really valued safety. So there's still some out there, so be patient. All right, double dipping from John Sparks. That's what I do with this jar of peanut butter right out of it. Uh, with Gregory McCoy, Armstrong, Jackson, plus other studs on the D-line, isn't secondary the first priority? I mean, for starters, Dorrance Armstrong and Joe Jackson are not studs. And you cannot bank on Randy Gregory. I feel good about two and a half of my defensive line spots. feel great about Gerald McCoy. I feel great about Demarcus Lawrence. If Gregory comes back, cool. Maybe that's an option. You can't bank on him, though. You have maybe Antoine Woods and Tristan Hill. You got literally three guys right now at defensive tackle. You got to find more bodies there. Dorrance Armstrong, Joe Jackson, you guys haven't done anything. So you can try to roll with those two, but it might not pay off in the end for you. So secondary is a priority, but at least I got bodies there right now. I still need a safety. I still need a, a number one corner, but I also do still need defensive line. You need all those things. That's why you're juggling that in the end. All right, Jair, any cornerback sleepers? They're going to be sleepers in the draft. Um, how about Troy Pride out of Notre Dame? I don't know where he goes, and I think the cornerback class in general isn't overly deep, but... I do think maybe someone like a Troy Pry could end up being a fit here. I think mean, that could be a route that the Cowboys potentially pursue in the later rounds. And, ooh, here's a sleeper for you because of injury. Bryce Hall. I like him a lot. Now, he's not fast. It's okay. You can get by with that in the NFL. But he could be a day two, maybe even early day three fit for Dallas. All right, Cajun Kennedy. How much would Sanders cost? That's the million dollar, the multi-million dollar question, isn't it, right? If the cost comes in around what Randall Cobb got last year, okay. I am heavily interested at that point. Now, Sanders is better than Randall Cobb. If I can get him for $7 million, if I can get him for $8 million, I am in. I am totally in for Emmanuel Sanders. If it goes beyond that, I'm going to have to pass. I, I got to use that money at different positions for the time being. And I can even find... Someone in the draft, because it is going to be a good draft class. Emil Pedersen, sign OBJ to the Cowboys. First off, not how it works. You have to trade for him. I don't really see the need to go trade for Odell Beckham. I've got Amari Cooper. I've got Michael Gallup. Do I want to bring in OBJ? If I'm playing Madden, yes. If I'm trying to juggle everything in terms of money, both short-term and long-term, I don't want to be paying two receivers over $16 million, especially when I want to re-sign Gallup in a couple years. It's kind of the, the long-term play that I'm, I'm viewing here. All right, Evan again, 
Should we try to trade for Brandon Cooks and what would be the cost? My answer is no. Not because I don't like Brandon Cooks, because I got to pay him and I got to give up a draft pick. Why would I throw the, the 14 million average of the next three years that Cooks has? It's not that bad of a value. It's not, but it's a little bit too pricey for my blood. That's an issue for me. So in terms of, of Evan, I, I like the question here. The other big issue for Brandon Cooks for, for me is concussions. He hasn't been healthy. Like, that's a huge issue for me. So I am passing on Brandon Cooks. I don't want the concussions. I don't want to pay him. I'll keep my draft pick and go cheaper at receiver if I can't get Emmanuel Sanders. All right, Saeed, a super chat says, trade back in the draft with the Jags, taking their 20th pick and 42nd overall pick and getting uh, McKinney, Aquara, and Noah Igbenogany. Well, I love the, the, the three players you picked. Uh, you take care of your safety need. You add another corner and an edge. The Jags aren't going to do that. That's way too much to give up in the end. So, folks, coming up next, A, we're going to put this on loop for you guys. At 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, NFL Daily's coming up in a simulcast with Mitchell Renz and Harrison Graham. Misha, get it together. Hello, friends, and welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Misha, Downey, Misha. once again rocking this awesome Kashiyama suit. We're going to break down some free agency targets here for the Dallas Cowboys. Several of them you guys have already thrown into the live chat. Some of them you haven't, but we'll break them down. Remember, guys, you can still sign players. That is what's still going on. So before we dive into the players, I want to mention where the needs are right now. Defensive end, defensive tackle, safety, cornerback are some of the big ones right there, which, by the way, Defense, that's the big area of focus for your Dallas Cowboys. Receiver, by the way, especially wide receiver three, also a key area of focus for Dallas. So we're going to begin with defensive end, a name many of you have put in into the comment section. Devian Clowney, I've said this before. We said it like a day ago. I don't know. Time blends together during free agency. I don't even know what day it is anymore. The Cowboys are not going to be interested in Clowney unless his price drops significantly. Clowney was asking for Tank Lawrence money or more. He's not going to have interest in that. Well, the Cowboys are. There's no way they're going to pay that. They're just not going to. However, Clowney's market hasn't been what he wanted it to be. Now, if Dallas wanted to, they could afford him. But the question is, at what point do they want to afford him? Clowney only had three sacks last year. Now, if you foolishly only judge production on sacks, you think he sucks. He doesn't. He's a good player. He's not DeMarcus, even as good as DeMarcus Lawrence is. He's not worth $20 million. I'm not paying him that. If it comes down to 16 17 15 okay, I, start, I kind of start having some interest at that point. Now, where things sit right now on the Cowboys' defensive line, you can very clearly see there's some needs there. You got, I think, two starters for sure locked in. Very clearly, Demarcus Lawrence, Gerald McCoy. Well, Antoine Woods could be back. You can start him if you need to. Tyrone Crawford, frankly, he might be your best bet, guys. It's not a great group out there. Now, one guy I would love to pursue, and frankly, I think makes a little bit more sense than Clowney, is Everson Griffin. Now, Griffin opted out of his deal with the Minnesota Vikings. The initial plan was to re-sign. That hasn't happened yet. That seems interesting to me. There is, of course, a connection as well for the Cowboys and for Everson Griffin. Namely, that former Vikings defensive coordinator George Edwards is currently on the staff for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, there was a report out of Minnesota that the market for Griffin could be around 8 to $10 million, somewhere in that range. If that's the case... I do have interest, especially if you can structure it as I know the Cowboys can in a very clever way. So for the cost involved, I actually prefer Griffin to Clowney. Now there are some other defensive end targets in a group that is very, very thin right now. Overall, it's just not that good. It was thin to begin with and with a lot of the top players off the market, not too interested right there. The other guys I want to mention, Marcus Golden. You could bring back Michael Bennett. That might be a sensible move here for the Cowboys. Ezekiel Ansah. Those two other guys on the edges there, Golden Ansah, they would impact your comp pick formula. 
That's a potential issue there. And Clay Matthews was just cut as well. I don't love his fit, though. Even though there are Mike McCarthy ties, I'm not quite sure how he fits in this Cowboys defense if they don't want to move to a full 3-4 scheme. So who do you want the Dallas Cowboys to sign? Let me know in the comment section. In fact, let me know on the pinned comment. If you're watching on YouTube, you might get an ad break here. So scroll down to that pinned comment. It will be this question. You can cast your votes right there. Let's talk about some offense now because offense is really close to being in fantastic shape, just so we're clear. There is interest, mutual interest, between Emmanuel Sanders and the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Sanders would not be a Randall Cobb replacement. He'd actually be a Randall Cobb upgrade. I have mentioned Emmanuel Sanders for years on this show. Even before the Cowboys got Amari Cooper, I was talking about, hey, can I get Emmanuel Sanders? Now, I had initially thought Sanders' market was going to be too high. It was going to be too expensive. He only really made sense if the Cowboys lost Amari Cooper. But maybe Sanders' market isn't as great as I thought it was going to be. He hasn't signed yet, after all. Maybe Sanders could take a $6, 7000000 million deal. Just throwing that out there as a potential option. And then Sanders comes in. He can play slot, can play outside. I'll tell you this. If the Cowboys get Emmanuel Sanders, I will put this receiving core up with anybody in the NFL. Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, Emmanuel Sanders, I'll take on any any trio in the NFL. I, I really, truly would. Now, you can still draft somebody, as we'll get into here in a little bit, but if I can get Sanders at a Gerald McCoy S deal, even just maybe like it's a uh, two years, 16, or maybe two year 15 fully guaranteed, I do that in a heartbeat. My issue is, I don't know if Sanders ends up doing that. Now, today's show is brought to you by Kashiyama, the smart tailor. They have launched their new modern tailor line, and it's exactly that. It is modern. And you can check it out at Kashiyama1927.com. But this is not your normal cotton stuffy heated suit. Anything but, frankly. These are high-performance fabrics, a bit more like the athletic gear than like that gross cotton blend that gets all stuffy and sweaty that's not fun to, to sit around in at all. It's got wrinkle-resistant fa fabric, so you don't have to iron it every time. And heck, you don't have to pay for dry cleaning. You can throw it in your washing machine. And these suits start at 300 bucks. Yeah, that's the best suit deal out there. So check them out, Kashiyama1927.com. And this one is not the modern tailor line. It's one of the more classic ones. They've got both. They begin at 300 bucks. So check them out at Kashiyama1927.com. I'll put that link, by the way, in the comments and in the description. Next up is Taylor Gabriel. He was cut by the Chicago Bears before free agency began. He's a veteran option. Now, he's not as good as Cobb. He's simply not. He's not going to be that same caliber of player. He's a fine option. But if the options are Taylor Gabriel, you can throw in pretty much any other receiver. I don't think Robbie Anderson's a fit from a price record. That's why he's not on there. Gabriel, pretty much everybody else, including Des Bryant, since you guys keep asking in the comment section, why not just draft somebody? And this, this is my question to you right now. What should the Cowboys do at wide receiver three? Draft somebody or sign somebody? I say it's Emmanuel Sanders or draft pick. And by the way, you can still sign Des Bryant and draft somebody. It's fine. But Des has never been a slot receiver in the NFL. Just keep that in mind. So I say draft. You guys let me know in the comments section. But it is a historically great draft class. Back to defense now. And Adamican Sue, the production's dipped. He is not the same guy he was in his prime or even at, frankly, Nebraska. But he does still provide something the Cowboys could, could use. That's some interior presence and some beef and fatties only applies to Ndamukong and Sue. My expectation for Sue is that he will wait on signing again. We'll see if this gets turned into an erroneous comment in like, you know, a day, which might end up happening. But I think he's going to take some time to make his decision. And yes, you brought in Gerald McCoy. You cannot be done on the interior. Literally, you cannot be done because you don't have enough bodies in there. You have Gerald McCoy. I, I, I can you not operate under the assumption that you'll bring back Antoine Woods, but I need more than just Woods, quite frankly. And Tristan Hill. You're going to run out there with three interior to defensive linemen? No, no, no. Absolutely not. So I know that there's some frustration over the lack of urgency by a lot of the Cowboys' moves so far. Patience. There will be more moves. 
just from a pure math perspective, there literally has to be. And we will keep you updated on all of those moves right here at the Cowboys Report. Hit that big red button and subscribe. We're almost at 51K. Yeah, I went from 50K to 51K super quickly. I think we hit it during the show. Let's see if we can make that happen. So hit that big red button and subscribe. I promise you guys, no one will keep you more updated on the Cowboys free agency and the Cowboys in general than we will right here. You guys knew Snacks was going to be in here, right? I already see the comments coming in. I didn't put him at the first. I wanted to make you wait a little bit because we all know. We want Damon Harrison. At least I think I speak for most Cowboys fans when I, when I say that. I'm sure there's someone out there who doesn't want Harrison because no one in this country can agree 100% on everything. Harrison already lives in Dallas, by the way. My concern here is the price tag issue. Harrison is exactly what the Cowboys need. It's exactly what they need. He's not going to be a great sack machine, but he's going to be a run clogger, a run stopper, can be on the field if you need him on third downs, will probably come off anyway. Damon Harrison is a guy that I have coveted for a while for the Cowboys. In the past, his contract was always too high. It was always too expensive. Now coming off a down year in which he was still better than any Cowboys interior defensive lineman in terms of stopping the run, maybe that could work out in the end. Now in the past, I've asked you guys to spam snacks to show that we won it. Different question for you guys today. What's your favorite snack out there? There are a lot of great options. My answer is going to surprise you. It's actually peanut butter. Now normally of these snacks, I think junk food. I see cookies in there from Triple X. I love peanut butter. I will eat that straight out of the jar repeatedly. My wife hates it when I do it, but I absolutely love it. I see popcorn, Cheez-Its, Cheetos, Gushers. Ooh, Bill D. That's a different question right there. I like that one. Cheetos, cookies, popcorn, chocolate. Patrick, get out of the comments. It's very rude. Uh, Alan, I'm not sure. Oh, Alan doesn't like my comment. I, I, you said yuck. I thought you said something else. I was real confused because you always watch. Paydays. That's not one I thought we were going to see in there. Keep those comments coming, folks, as we move on to Mike Pinnell. Mike Pinnell is the former Chiefs defensive lineman player with the Patriots as well. There is a direct correlation this year for the Chiefs' run defense with Mike Pinnell versus without it. When he came to town, they were much better. There is a Mike McCarthy connection played for Green Bay from 2014 to 2016. So if you can't get Damon Harrison and you're still looking for a big boy on the interior who can play that nose guard role well for you, I suggest Pinnell. I think he's going to be productive. Now, he might be a little cheap. Might not be as good as Damon Harrison. Frankly, won't be as good as Damon Harrison, but he'd be a good addition for the Cowboys. All right, some other defensive tackle targets here. I'll mention Shelby Harris, Derek Wolf. I think that makes some sense. I wonder what if their market's a little bit too expensive and... They kind of strike me more of the Gerald McCoy, Tyrone Crawford role, which could be needed, but I want fat boys. Dontari Poe, Marcel Darius, two names that are big. We know who those guys are. The casual fan knows. They're not the same guys they were in their prime. Don't Let's not forget that. So if they can come in, they wouldn't impact the comp pick formula, I don't believe, but they're not going to quite make the impact you might otherwise think. Now, a reminder, go check out Kashiyama at Kashiyama1927.com. Custom-fitted suits. Takes an hour to get your perfect fit. They start from $300. It's the best suit deal out there. So check the comments. Check the description. That link's in there at Kashiyama1927.com. Let's talk safeties now. You guys knew we were going to get here, right? Von Bell is the first one up. I like Von Bell. If you're looking for a pure, strong safety, he fits that mold. He really does. And he's at his best, by the way, in run support, hence the strong safety. Now, he's not going to go back to the Saints. They signed Malcolm Jenkins instead. There is a connection here. Former Saints LB's coach Mike Nolan is the new Cowboys defensive coordinator. Bell is not going to be a playmaker. And my concern with Bell, even though I like him as a player, is I don't really trust him in deep coverage. And here's my question for you. We don't quite yet know what the Cowboys scheme will be. My suspicion right now is that Dallas is going to run more single high coverage. That's the path they're going to end, or, or excuse me, more quarters coverage, excuse me. That's the route they're going to end up going. I don't think Von Bell fits that quite perfectly. 
Now, a player who fits it better is HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix, who's played strong safety and free safety. And I failed to mention this before, and that's that's my fault. Yes, HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix played for the, the Packers under Mike McCarthy. The ending of Clinton Dix's tenure in Green Bay was bad. He more or less quit on that team. Uh, maybe we'll see if McCarthy's forgiven him for that. Now, he played well for the Bears. We'll see what his market is, but he does bring you some playmaking. I think that's valuable for what this team could use right now, especially given the cornerback position. Two interceptions, three picks, three picks, five picks. Turnovers can be a little a little inconsistent, but three picks pretty much every year of his, of his past four years? Yeah, I, I, I can make that work. A name I do like here that, again, is under the radar is Adrian Phillips, who, fun fact, was an All-Pro in 2018. Despite that, he's not going to be that expensive. He's just not going to be. The market for safeties overall, as you'll see in a second, still has some bodies out there. It's not like it's depleted in the same way Edge kind of almost is. He was banged up last year. But I think he fits what the Cowboys could attempt to do. So I think that makes a whole lot of sense for the Dallas Cowboys in terms of what options are out there in the end. There are a variety of other safeties who are out there right now that we can get into as well beyond just Adrian Phillips. I see a lot of you guys mention Eric Reed. He's one of them. Again, if you're going to play quarters coverage, if that's going to be more of your base defense, I don't think Eric Reed fits that well. If you want to in the box strong safety, sign me up. Demarius Randall, Anthony Harris definitely fit in that deep kind of quarters coverage role. I will make note on Anthony Harris, he would be a trade target, but the Vikings are shopping him, so I would, I'd include him here. Rashad Jones, Demarius Randall, all those guys are in there as well. Someone mentioned Eric Berry. If he's healthy, he ain't healthy, so I'm not going to include him on this list for that reason. Now we're going to dive into cornerbacks next, but do the Cowboys need one? Type 1 for yes, 0 for no. And as you'll see as we go through a whole bunch of different targets, my answer is 1, but the Cowboys do need a corner, but they don't need just any corner. What they need is a number 1 corner. And that's my issue with the groupings out there. Let's go through some of the top targets, right? Logan Ryan, best corner available on the free agent market. He is not a number 1. He also wants $10 million per year. The Cowboys have shown zero interest in paying corners that money. I'm not going to get my hopes up. And by the way, Logan Ryan, he's best in the nickel. I got two guys already doing that role for me in Anthony Brown slash Jordan Lewis. Prince of Mukamara, he's a number two. I got enough of those guys already. I don't need four of the same caliber corner. I am almost to the point where I got to go number one or I'll go draft or I'll just roll with my four and focus on it again next year. Xavier Rhodes hasn't been good in two years. Was horrible last year. Ronald Darby, always hurt. Tremaine Johnson was once great, sucked for the Jets. Like, he was terrible. Jimmy Smith, also once great. Banged up, not the same guy anymore. I see a lot of you guys mention, mentioning Xavier Rhodes. I know the answer is no, that you didn't watch the Vikings. That's okay, you're, you're Cowboys fans. I did. He's bad. He sucked. Like, he is not the solution. Akeem Tlaib, Brandon Carr were once number one cornerbacks. Not anymore. I'm sorry. Kevin Johnson, eh, kind of more of the same. Nikel Roby Coleman, I like him, but guess what? He's also a nickel. I need a number one guy. I don't see that guy out there in free agency. Let's get down to some live Q&A. First up from C1L2D3. Should we sign Jerron Curse, the former Viking safety, and Derek Wolf? I believe they are both cheap options that could be viable pieces. I think Derek Wolf's, uh, you know, price tag is going to be a little bit higher than you might think. I will make note: Jerron Curse has already signed, so he is—he's not available. I believe it was the Detroit Lions who picked him up. So I would have liked Jerron Curse. I thought his price tag came in pretty fair, but he is now a member of the Detroit Lions, so. You're not going to be able to end up getting him instead. Kelly McMurrian, what about Sue to fill the middle? Would probably would be pretty cheap right now. Again, I think with, with Nindamak and Sue, he is going to wait a little bit. I have interest there, yes. I would prefer Damon Harrison before that. 
So I, I do have some interest in Sue. And I, I don't want to say this phrase too much because you, you guys will get annoyed by it. But it comes down to at the right price. ATRP. And I, so in the past, Indomitian Sue has not been that price tag for the Cowboys. Ghostface88. Ian wants to know about Everson Griffin, who we did mention a little bit ago. I, I like the idea of Griffin. I If I can get him for under 10, I'm all over that. I think that would be a home run move by, by the Cowboys. Griffin is better than Leonard Floyd by a significant margin. So yeah, I'm going to sign up for Griffin if I can get him for that price tag. Now, we want to mention two things here. First off, we'll get to server's question. This just came across the wire. This is breaking news here. Sean Payton has been diagnosed with what we're going to start calling the Big C because Utah doesn't look like, or, or YouTube doesn't like it when we call the uh, disease that he just was diagnosed with as, they don't like it when we say it. So Big C is what, is what it's going to be here going forward. Sean Payton has been diagnosed with this. That is your breaking news right here, the former Cowboys coach on the Cowboys report. That's what Sean Payton has. So wash your hands, guys. I will continue to remind people of that. Now back to server minor gamers question. On a scale of 1 to 10, what are the chances of Dez coming back? Mm, going to give it a 3 or a 4? Um, it, it's a little bit... Of course, you, you open the door up with Randall Cobb not being back, but... I think for Dez, and we just mentioned the Sean Payton stuff, right? Sean, P no one's going to sign Dez without a physical. NFL teams are having a tricky time getting physicals done with people that they trust. That's an issue for Dez Bryant, plain and simple. He's coming back off the Achilles here. So three or four, I think, is the chances right now. I don't know. Someone just told me I lost it. I don't know why you're booing me. I'm right. Like, Dez has not been a slot receiver. I think someone will sign him. I'm not convinced it's going to be the Cowboys. I don't know why we're so obsessed with a guy who hasn't played football in two years. The Cowboys never should have cut him. You can still sign him on a one-year deal with no guaranteed money. I'm all for that. But I'm not assuming that Des Bryant solves my issues at slot receiver because you know what happens when you assume. Let's grade stuff Cowboys free agency moves so far, by the way. Obviously, you, you got Gerald McCoy, you, you, you tagged Dak Prescott, you got Amari Cooper, you made all those types of moves, you brought back Anthony Brown, Joe Looney as well, mostly the cheap deals. So grade the Cowboys free agency moves so far, of course. A, B, C, D, or F? I, I, I'm in the C-ish range. You can maybe talk me into a C+. I, you know, I, don't, I, I can't give it an A. You've lost too many players already. It's still super early in this entire process, so... I'm in that C plus B minus range. I kind of think it's a, a C so far. All right, some more live Q and A here. This one from Alan Williams. Is Dallas still trying to trade for Jamal Adams? Uh, I haven't heard anything new on the Adams front. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, the Cowboys, I think, are focused less on trading their first round pick right now. So I think you have to explore other options at the moment in terms of figuring out what your needs at defensive line, edge, and corner end up being. All right, next up from Winston Shan. Do you want to try out Connor McGovern at swing tackle since Fleming is gone? No, I don't. I don't view Connor McGovern as a tackle. I, I, I think Connor McGovern's fit here is as a guard or if you want to make him a backup center that could make some some sense like I, and I think that's the that's the route that you end up going if you want to move any of the guards to swing tackle it's probably Connor Williams so I now you can let the Connors compete this year but I, I, I don't think McGovern is going to end up being a swing tackle now, today's show is brought to you by Kashiyama, the smart tailor. Check out their new modern tailor line at Kashiyama1927.com. That is Kashiyama1927.com. Their suits, by the way, start from just 300 bucks. That's the cost of the other major men's chains out there that aren't as good as at Kashiyama. The fittings, by the way, are free. You don't have to, you're not going to be charged for that either. Now, there's a couple, now when you get a fitting, Here's kind of how this goes, all right? Step one, of course, is you meet your master stylist. I had Nick. She was fantastic. Got me this awesome, perfect fitted suit. 
They will create you a tailored suit, exactly what you want. The feel's gonna be perfect, the look's gonna be awesome, and it will be delivered to you in just 10 days. It's a very quick turnaround for just how high quality these fabrics actually are. It's Kashiyama1927.com. That whole process, by the way, the fitting, takes one hour. It's Kashiyama1927.com. All right, Scott Simpkin says, go get Clay Matthews. He has been released. He has been released. You're absolutely right there, Scott. I am curious to see what Clay Matthews can still have. Now, I know he had eight sacks last year. It's only 3.5 back in 2018. He played well enough for the LA Rams. I don't, believed that Clay, I don't believe that Clay Matthews is washed. And because he was cut, I do have interest. I wouldn't mind getting in somebody like Clay Matthews who fits that veteran mold. My initial concern is I'm not sure how Clay Matthews quite fits scheme. Now, he's mostly been an outside linebacker. He can throw this hand on the dirt. It's fine. So I would have some interest in Clay Matthews yet. I just wonder if he's truly going to fit the scheme the Cowboys have planned. Which of course, we don't know what that's actually going to end up being. All right, Alex Campa. So if we were to draft Xavier McKinney, would we take another defensive guy in the second round or maybe tight end? Well, it depends on what other needs you have in terms of on defense. I don't think you're going tight end round two. Guys, you just played, you just paid Blake Jarwin. That move yelled, it should be yelling at you that says, he's our guy this year. I, I don't see why you would spend a round two pick on a not good tight end class. That'd be that would upset me. If if, 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 if if the Cowboys actually chose to go that route. If you go safety in round one, I still think defensive line cornerback are going to be the main areas you got to figure out. All right, Destroyer Dog, which cornerback, safety, or DT can help the Cowboys the most? Well, if you're just going on overall talent, uh, and maybe Logan Ryan is the best pure player out there, I'd still look at Jadevian Clowney, of course, at that perspective. But in terms of best fit, I kind of wonder if Damon Harrison, the guy that I've wanted for a while now, really fits perfectly for the Dallas Cowboys. We're doing something a little bit different on today's show. Follow me on Twitter today, and I will follow you back. We're trying to get to 7,300. We're not that far away. I have complete faith in your ability to to get me to this figure, and I would greatly appreciate it. 7,300 is the goal. We are not far away, 29 away. So I'm not going to be able to follow you guys back right now because, you know, we're in the middle of a live show. That's super complicated for me. But I have the last person who followed me written down, so I will follow everyone back who follows me during today's show. So go hit me up on Twitter at what. Going Downey. That link, by the way, is in the comments and in the description. All right, yo, Squiggly Man, what are your dream free agency pickups and dream draft pickups? Okay, if I could juggle this exactly right, I think I would go. I would go sign Damon Harrison. And I feel good about my my starters on the defensive line. I would sign Everson Griffin, and now I feel good about defensive end. And I'll fill out the back end of my roster here uh, overall. And I think I would I would probably I'd settle for Christian Fulton, Stan Henderson in round one, Antoine Winfield in round two, and in some bizarre path, KJ Hamler falls to me in round three, and I filled most of my needs. That I think I think that's a, a somewhat realistic dream path here for the Dallas Cowboys. So we'll see if it comes true. Probably not given recent history. But there you go. All right, typical Python trade Cooper. I okay, so I am. I'm just going to assume this is Cooper Rush because if this is Cooper Barrett, just kill me now. Tyron Smith and a fourth round pick for Jamal Adams. You want no? You want to trade Amari Cooper too? I think that's what this means. You're trading away Amari Cooper and Tyron Smith for Jamal Adams? No. And what, le what left tackle are you signing to replace Tyron? Well, I think there are some paths in which trading Tyron could actually make a little bit of sense for this team. This is not one of them, my friend. I'm sorry. All right, Jacob Haben, 
If Jeffrey Akuda falls to eight, would you be interested in trading a second and fourth to get him? I, well, I mean, I assume you, you're including your first rounder in this because there is not a chance in hell that you're getting a second and fourth for a top eight pick. There's just no way. That's not that's not how it works. If if Akuda slides to eight. Yeah, I, I'm probably going to go trade up for him. I think that makes a lot of sense for the Cowboys. I don't think he's even going to get out of the top five, though. All right, Evan Hildering, do we sign Demarius Randall? I think it's possible. I, I, I am so optimistic of the Cowboys finally addressing safety one way or the other. But we also have to remember, this is a, t a franchise, a team that since Ken Hamlin was around... Hasn't valued safeties. They just haven't. So, there are so many out there. They got to sign somebody else. Shit, I'll settle for another George I Ioka signing at this point. But I I would almost, I kind of like the draft guys. I would be okay if, as long as they take, if they can spend a top 75 pick on a safety, I'll, I'll still be okay in the end. And as a reminder, folks, today's show brought to you by Kashiyama. They got me this awesome custom fitted suit. You can't tell my name. Right there, inside. So visit the Kashiyama website. It's Kashiyama1927.com. Check it out. You can book a free fitting. And all these suits, by the way, start at just 300 bucks. Super Chat coming in from Matthew. Wants to know thoughts on Xavier McKinney from Alabama. I like him. I don't love him at 17 overall. But I like him. I think he's a very good player. I wouldn't mind to trade down for him. I think that could be the best path to get him. I wouldn't hate it if he was the pick at 17, depending on how the board ends up falling. Good player, can do a lot of different things for you. You know, I don't like him as a true single high guy, but in quarters, or even in some cover two, or, or in, you know, against tight ends in the box, hanging around around the line of scrimmage, he can do all, all those things. And I think that's a good path for McKinney. All right, Bill D, what does Dak's future look like? I mean, I think it's just a matter of time until he signs that extension. Again, I don't think that the Cowboys and Dak are too far off. I really don't. I And I, I know I've said this for a while now. I'd be surprised if a deal wasn't done before the July 15th deadline. And if once you get that deal done, the way you structure his contract will actually save you money on the cap versus what his cap hit is right now. No matter how high it is, you'll be able to pull that off. So... I like that path for the Cowboys. We'll have to see what ends up happening. But I, I think that Dak is your long-term quarterback, and frankly, for good reason. He's a really good quarterback. Sorry. All right, Jahir uh, Venegas, what are some trade targets who we can target that we can trade for low draft picks and produce well like Quinn? I mean, you've seen a couple get moved around the NFL. Jarrell Casey is one. Uh, we, we saw Clay Campbell is another one. I don't see a ton of names out there. I think we'll have to wait and see. There will be some people out there that I think become available maybe after the draft. You start seeing more of those guys become available and they become on the open market. So, Jair, it's a great question. We will revisit that in a video, I promise you guys, after the dust settles in free agency and before and after the draft as well. I think that makes some sense. Now, we were supposed to do about a half-hour show. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna override the bosses here if we can get enough yeses. Do you want more Cowboys Q and A? Type Y for yes, N for no. Now our peak comments per minute today, 160. This isn't bad, but those are rookie numbers. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna risk the ire from the bosses here because they want to do some NFL stuff and I get that, but that's Cowboys are a bigger priority. So if we can get enough yeses. To surpass 160 comments per minute, we'll do it. So everybody watching, spam yes so that we can do some more live Q&A here on, the, on America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. So everyone do me a favor as I get a sip out of my mediocre drink. I don't want to uh, uh, alienate the uh, brand here. But everyone spam yes for me. Everyone spam it, and I think we can get to over 160. I, I see 53 right now, Alicia. Is, is there, do you, do you see, oh, I see 167. All right, we did it. There we go. So we'll do some more live Q&A then for you guys. Thank you all so much. We'll go another, another, another little Q&A session here coming up right now.
First up in our live Cowboys Q&A, Christopher Lowe. Can you trade Dak on the franchise? I think he means hypothetical. What about Demarcus Lawrence? Uh, never liked his performance for, for that price. I mean, we'll have to disagree in terms of the, the price for Demarcus Lawrence. I, he's going to have a bounce back here in terms of raw sack production. He still played really well. His contract is structured in such a way, though, that it really doesn't make sense to, to trade him. If you trade away Demarcus Lawrence, you eat so much dead money that it only makes sense if you're tanking, which the Cowboys aren't doing. As for Dak, you can trade players on the franchise tag after they sign the franchise tag. Guess what Dak's not going to do? Sign the tag until he gets a long-term deal until, or until he absolutely has to. Doesn't make sense for him to do it. So that's not going to happen. I knew you were going to get one. I, I knew we were going to. Sign Todd Gurley. Barrett, you are a longtime watcher, and I thank you. But I, I know you're not the only one who's asked this. You're just the one that Alicia chose to bring up. But why? Why do I need Todd Gurley on this team? Why would I pay money when I already threw a whole bunch at Zeke Elliott and I got Tony Pollard and I barely carry three backs anyway? Just no need for it. All right, Zappo7, if you were to trade Pollard to the Rams, what, uh, what would you want back? Do you think this is a good idea? Eh? I don't know. Um, second or a third would be nice, I guess. And I, I guess I don't hate it, but I'm not convinced the Rams. The Rams also don't have any draft picks. So I don't really think you're going to see the Rams trade for a back. Pam Veely, uh, we have another question coming up here. Uh, will Matthews re Clay Matthews reunite with McCarthy for cheap and thoughts on linebackers going into the season? So if you go with the – in terms of the fit for Clay Matthews, he's a pass rusher. So he's, he's not going to be a – outside linebacker for you. Maybe he'll play some 4-3 Sam, but he's going to get after the quarterback. So, I have some interest there. I do. What's the cost look like? I know we put up some sack production. I'm not sure how great he was this past year, but, and I think originally maybe I was a little too, like, dismissive, but I think it, I think it does make some sense, actually, for Clay Matthews. As for the linebackers, you got Jalen Smith. I think Leighton Vanich is progressing. You brought back Sean Lee. You need depth, like, late round draft pick depth and special teamers. That's what you need. By the way, there was a super chat from Saeed Uda. Thank you very much. There was no question with it, but that was a dollar super chat. So, Saeed, thank you very much for that. Akil, if Fulton and Brown are there at 17, who are you taking? I'm taking the better player. I'm taking Derek Brown. I have, I have long wanted a 330-pound-plus defensive lineman who can actually pressure the quarterback. That's Derek Brown. I do believe there is a path, as slim as it is, to getting Derek Brown at number 17 overall. I, I do believe that is a possibility. I, I'm not calling it a likely possibility, but I believe it is one. So who would you rather take, Brown or Fulton? I like Christian Fulton. Don't, don't get me wrong on that one. But I do like Derek Brown. I do like Fulton. I like Derek Brown a whole lot more. All right, Martin Herrera. Will the Cowboys get Eric Berry? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, it's possible they did. They they brought him in for a, a visit last year medically, but Eric Berry will not sign anywhere until he is checked out medically. He, that's going to be tough to do right now in, in the world. That's just the, the reality of this whole situation. So, sure, maybe. I'm also not banking on injury prone. Hasn't played really in two years. Eric Berry being the, the answer. All right, Damian Alvarez. I also want to shout out Alex uh, Villegas, who follows me on Twitter. I know that. I, I know you do there, Alex, who just sent in a, a super chat with no question. Thank you very much. Damian Alvarez asks about Shaquille Barrett. The Bucks franchise tagged him. You're not gonna get him. Like, I, I look. If you watched our show this time last year, you guys know I really wanted Shaq Barrett. Now it worked out fine. You you got Robert Quinn. It, it, it's, it's it's all been good in the end. You're just not gonna be able to acquire Shaq Barrett. The Bucks are not gonna let him leave because they're trying to win games with Tom Brady at the helm. So. 
I, lo I love Shaq Barrett, but I'm sorry, guys. You're just not going to find a way to get that one in. Now, you see there at the bottom of your screen, Sean Payton, just a quick little note here. He has been diagnosed with what we're going to call the Big C because YouTube doesn't like it when we call it the actual name. But that is some news that, that came across the NFL wire like, I don't know, a half hour ago, not even, maybe 10 minutes ago, something like that. He does have the big C. You guys know what we're talking about, but YouTube doesn't like us to say it because it's too sensitive, but it is kind of a big deal. All right, Adam J., any updates on snacks right now? Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, got, I, I, got, I got peanut butter right here. Oh, you mean Damon Snacks, Harrison. Peanut butter is my favorite snack. Uh, nothing new yet. It's been kind of quiet on his front. I wonder if there's some medical stuff that could be an issue for Damon. That's really why he's not going forward. All right, we're going to some more live Q&A here. Coming up next on the show is Mr. Payne, 522. Will M. Bennett be re-signed, or will they sign a cheap option like Ravens free agent Pernell McPhee? Haven't been really thought about per Pernell McPhee actually very much, but I think that makes some sense for uh, for the uh, for the Cowboys and as a fit, as a cheap fit. I, well, I can't rule out Michael Bennett, but I would be kind of surprised if he came back to the Dallas Cowboys. It's not, it's not impossible, but I would bet no more than I would bet yes on that front. I am rocking, once again, a Kashiyama suit, and you can get one of your own by checking out Kashiyama1927.com. That is Kashiyama1927.com. You can create your own custom suit. You can explore all their options and get fitted for free, including their modern tailor line that includes washable, machine washable suits that don't need to be ironed. Yeah, it's awesome. Kashiyama1927.com. All right, Evan Hildering has an idea around the Dallas Cowboys. He says Fulton in round one, Winfield in the second, and Raquan Davis in the third. I'm on board with the first two. Raquan Davis in the third is fine. I'd rather have Lecky Fotua, who I think will also be there. I know that Raquan had that great sophomore year with like seven and a half, eight sacks. He hasn't been good since then. Like, I, I think I don't think that's a real outcome here in terms of in a, as a third round being a, a good fit for the Dallas Cowboys. So I I love the first two picks. I wouldn't hate Raekwon in the third. I just wonder if you could find a way to get a little bit better player in the end for the Dallas Cowboys in that third round as a particular option. So not the worst idea. I like the first rounds a lot, but I think it's good. John Sparks, why haven't we signed HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix yet? Well, A, it does take two parties to sign. B, I know he has ties to Mike McCarthy, and I probably should have done a much better job of mentioning this in the past, and that's my fault, guys. The ending of that tenure didn't go too well, and also the Cowboys historically haven't really valued safety. So there's still some out there, so be patient. All right, double dipping from John Sparks. That's what I do with this jar of peanut butter right out of it. Uh, with Gregory McCoy, Armstrong, Jackson, plus other studs on the D-line, isn't secondary the first priority? I mean, for starters, Dorrance Armstrong and Joe Jackson are not studs. And you cannot bank on Randy Gregory. I feel good about two and a half of my defensive line spots. feel great about Gerald McCoy. I feel great about Demarcus Lawrence. If Gregory comes back, cool. Maybe that's an option. You can't bank on him, though. You have maybe Antoine Woods and Tristan Hill. You got literally three guys right now at defensive tackle. You got to find more bodies there. Dorrance Armstrong, Joe Jackson, you guys haven't done anything. So you can try to roll with those two, but it might not pay off in the end for you. So secondary is a priority, but at least I got bodies there right now. I still need a safety. I still need a, a number one corner, but I also do still need defensive line. You need all those things. That's why you're juggling that in the end. All right, Jair, any cornerback sleepers? There are going to be sleepers in the draft. Um, how about Troy Pride out of Notre Dame? I don't know where he goes, and I think the cornerback class in general isn't overly deep, but I do think maybe someone like a Troy Pride could end up being a fit. I think mean, that could be a route that the Cowboys potentially pursue in the later rounds. And, ooh, here's a sleeper for you because of injury. Bryce Hall. I like him a lot. Now, he's not fast. 
It's okay. You can get by with that in the NFL. But he could be a day two, maybe even early day three fit for Dallas. All right, Cajun Kennedy. How much would Sanders cost? That's the million dollar, the multi million dollar question, isn't it, right? If the cost comes in around what Randall Cobb got last year, okay. I am heavily interested at that point. Now, Sanders is better than Randall Cobb. If I can get him for $7 million, if I can get him for $8 million, I am in. I am totally in for Emmanuel Sanders. If it goes beyond that, I'm going to have to pass. I, I got to use that money at different positions for the time being. And I can even find a, someone in the draft because it is going to be a good draft class. Emil Pedersen, sign OBJ to the Cowboys. First off, not how it works. You have to trade for him. I don't really see the need to go trade for Odell Beckham. I've got Amari Cooper. I've got Michael Gallup. Do I want to bring in OBJ? If I'm playing Madden, yes. If I'm trying to juggle everything in terms of money, both short-term and long-term, I don't want to be paying two receivers over $16 million, especially when I want to re-sign Gallup in a couple years. It's kind of the, the long-term play that I'm, I'm viewing here. All right, Evan, again, should we try to trade for Brandon Cooks and what would be the cost? My answer is no. Not because I don't like Brandon Cooks, because I got to pay him and I got to give up a draft pick. Why would I throw the, the 14 million average of the next three years that Cooks has? It's not that bad of a value. It's not, but it's a little bit too pricey for my blood. That's an issue for me. So in terms of, of Evan, I, I like the question here. The other big issue for Brandon Cooks for, for me is concussions. He hasn't been healthy. Like, that's a huge issue for me. So I am passing on Brandon Cooks. I don't want the concussions. I don't want to pay him. I'll keep my draft pick and go cheaper at receiver if I can't get Emmanuel Sanders. All right, Saeed, a super chat says, trade back in the draft with the Jags, taking their 20th pick and 42nd overall pick and getting uh, McKinney, Aquara, and Noah Igbenogany. Well, I love the, the, the three players you picked. Uh, you take care of your safety need. You add another corner and an edge. The Jags aren't going to do that. That's way too much to give up in the end. So, folks, coming up next, A, we're going to put this on loop for you guys. At 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, NFL Daily is coming up in a simulcast with Mitchell Renz and Harrison Graham. You're watching NFL Daily by Chat Sports, and I want to welcome in our live audience, not just on our main Chat Sports YouTube channel, but also our Dallas Cowboys Report YouTube channel. Harrison, let's talk about some news here because Sean Payton, he has the big C. Yeah, and we'll get into some free agency stuff momentarily for you guys watching live, so don't worry about that. we got winners and losers later on as well, but we wanted to hit this off the top. Sean Payton, the first notable person to get the big C, uh, at least in the NFL, obviously. Correct. A bunch of people have, them, uh, have it globally, but uh, Sean Payton does have it, and... Uh, I mean, just another notable person that uh, has uh, come down with this issue that uh, has been going around the United States of America and the entire world. So we're not allowed to say what that word is because YouTube doesn't think that y'all can handle it. So anytime that we talk about the big C, I want everyone to type the letter C. So how about this, okay? We're trying to spread. No, we're trying to stop the spread, but we're trying to get everyone to type W if you've lost your answer. We're today. off to a good start Off here. to a really hot start here on uh, NFL Daily. So if you've washed your hands today, please, please, please type W. And if you haven't, get up, go to the sink, maybe get some hand sanitizer, figure out a way that you can wash your hands. Have you washed your hands today, Harrison? I have about seven times, and uh, it's probably not enough, so I'm spamming my W in the comments section. My, my skin is actually starting to, like, curl. It's like, a little dry. Oh, my gosh, it's so Did bad you go right swimming now. today? Uh, basically, with the amount of wet wipes we have around the Chat Sports office, we're trying to stay clean, and also remember that we're going to continue to be bringing you guys a whole bunch of coverage because we are washing our hands, and the big C – is not going to slow us down. So I see some people in there. We got Kevin Otto, Yeet Master, Mr. Pickles. Appreciate everyone who is watching the show and uh, continue to type your W if you've washed your hands. 
I want to welcome in Chat Sports audience here, and we have a lot of new subscribers. And if you're new to the show, appreciate you. What we do here, a lot of NFL news and rumors. We do live and interactive shows. If this is the first time that you've watched what we've done, I want you to hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notifications so you know every single time we drop a video. Let's get right in on into it here, Harrison. Really weird way to say that. Todd Gurley, he's been released. Yeah, and this is kind of uh, dropped in the past hour or so, and there was chatter of this earlier in the week. Could the Rams find a trade partner for him? I talked about it about five hours ago on NFL Daily. Yeah, that became a, a clear no because his contract uh, was just too brutal to move. So the Rams have cut him. L.A. could not find a trade partner. Obviously, he's had a nice young career, but past couple of years hasn't been as good. He's dealt with knee problems back into the 2018 season. Obviously, last year, you could tell he wasn't the same player. So the Rams have moved on. They have to eat over $20 million in dead cap money over the next two years, but they did save about $10 million yep. by cutting him before uh, the, today's deadline. Otherwise, a lot of that money would have become guaranteed. I will say this, though. Todd Gurley, he tweeted out, man, I can't believe I got fired <laughs> I on that. an off day. I mean, not too often do you get fired and basically put an extra, like, $20 million in your pocket. So, Todd Gurley, I know you've been falling off a little bit, but I'll say this. Back in 2017, back in 2018, he was one of the most fun and entertaining running backs in the entire league. So, I'm really, really curious on where he's going to be playing football this upcoming season. So, we have here some destinations, and you tomorrow, Harrison, I believe, are going to drop the top destinations for Todd Gurley, you're going to rank them. I was going to say, this is who the five we have so far. It could be subject to change depending oh, yeah. on what happens between tonight and tomorrow. But be looking out on the channel, youtube.com slash chatsportstv, especially for you newbies who aren't familiar with what we do. We're going to do our top five Todd Gurley destinations. I'll probably be uh, doing that video, so be on the lookout for that sometime tomorrow. For now, Bucks. I mean, Tom Brady, people want to play with them. Uh, they need a running back. That makes some sense. The Dolphins, who have been willing to spend big, they also signed Jordan Howard. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's a one-two punch. Bills, Broncos, Colts, some secondary options that we have so far, Mitch. Uh, those are some teams that make sense. Maybe a couple of others get into the mix, but uh, certainly there will be a market for Todd Gurley. If you guys want a Todd Gurley jersey, chatsports.com slash jersey deal. You can see it below. All right, I got a question. And for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's video. So you might get with an ad break. While the ad is playing, I want you to scroll on down and I want you to comment where you think Todd Gurley is going to play in 2020. Let's go now into Clay Matthews because the Rams, they've been pretty busy today and they released him after just one season. Yeah, the release Gurley, release Matthews. Uh, Matthews still had eight sacks last year, so he still is productive. I'll be curious to see what his market looks like. I, I do think he'll be a cheapish option. Can someone get him for five or six million? Maybe I, I Pete Carroll coached him at USC. He yeah, I think likes if him. If there's a destination, he is going to end up maybe going to the Seahawks, help out that defense, pair back up with Pete Carroll. They you could also even see him go back to Green Bay. They met, Cl they let Clowney go. Or maybe they let Clowney go and opt for the cheaper option in Clay Matthews, who had five more sacks than Clowney did in. <laughs> I mean, we're not comparing. We're not comparing Clay Matthews and Javion hey, Clowney. The stats are the stats. Uh, that's all I'm <laughs> oh saying. Uh, the last four years, uh, obviously eight sacks this past year, kind of a resurgence. Had seven and a half back in 2017. Certainly not the all-pro guy that used to fly around that, uh, bet, you know, back during his peak years in Green Bay, but still a productive guy, I think. Totally agree there, Harrison. All right, we're going to go in now to Darius Slay because this one went down this morning. I saw it break, and I was like, oh, no, where's he going? He's going to the Philadelphia Eagles for a third and fifth round pick. Big play Slay. He won it out of Detroit. Now he's going to go to the Eagles, and uh, I like it. I like the move. Well, not only did he want out, Mitch, he wanted a new deal to go with it, and that's what he gets. Three years, $50 million, uh, from Philadelphia. It's a good move. Third and a fifth is not a lot to get up, give up for I a true. I was pretty surprised that that's all it costs. For a true number one, I, I you know, he's, it's not like he's that old. I mean, he's still got three, four, five good years left, in my opinion. Uh, this is probably the most significant move in the NFC East so far. Because, like, yeah, Dallas brought back Amari Cooper and some other things, but in terms of a big some piece, other things, Dak a, a big, but a new big piece into okay. that division, I think the Darius Slade trade uh, is pretty significant. I agree. And, I mean, the numbers there, I mean, you don't get 26 pass breakups in a year Playmaker, if you're not. Man. The reason why they call him Big Play Slade is because the dude, he makes some big plays. So if you haven't seen the details of the trade, this is what it looks like on screen. So the Eagles, they get Darius Slade. Remember, they're also paying him three years, $50 million. The Lions, they receive a 2020 third round pick and a 2020 fifth round pick. So we're going to ask our audience here, who won the Slay trade? If you think it was the Lions, I want you to type L. If you think it was the Eagles, I want you to type E. 
Harrison, who do you think won? It's the Eagles, and I think our uh, viewers will agree with us. I've seen mostly E's in there. A couple of L's coming in, um, perhaps some Lions fans. Look, you get a number one corner and you don't give up a first or second round pick, you win the trade. That's just my opinion. I think this is good value uh, on the Eagles side of things. Detroit was kind of hamstrung because Slay made it clear he wanted out, which lowers a player's value. We, yep. see, we see that all the time. Um, so I think they just said, screw it, we just got to pull the trigger on this thing. It's better to get something for him than to, you know, play out 2020 and get nothing from him next offseason. I'm also going to type my E for Eagles, and I grew up in central Pennsylvania, and a lot of my friends, they were like, Mitch, do you know anywhere I can get an NFL jersey? You can get a Darius Slay? Unfortunately, it's not quite available yet, but if you do want to get your favorite team, if you want to get your favorite player, you can go to chatsports.com slash jersey deal. Harrison and I, we found some awesome Nike NFL jerseys for under $80. For, so for some reason, if you don't remember that the way you get one of these bad boys is by going to chatsports.com slash jersey deal, we'll put it in the comments. We'll put it in the description below. Shout out your favorite player. Shout out your favorite team. Make sure that you're repping them. Do you need a new jersey? I might. You might. I didn't, but then I saw this deal, so I might have to cop <laughs> a couple of these. Chatsports.com slash jersey deal. All right, let's go now to the Arizona Cardinals here because they're making moves. They've been really busy, and now they're adding a linebacker, Devondre Campbell. Yeah, this is a bit of Campbell. an over uh, overpay one year, $8.5 million, but you got to respect what the Cardinals have done. Not, he's productive, 90-plus tackles in three straight seasons. They've been very busy in free agency, Mitch. Good, uh, they should be. It, they've, added, they've added a lot of pieces. The NFC West is going to be loaded. I can't wait to watch uh, this team in that division this season. 129 tackles last year, a couple of sacks, forced fumbles, a couple of picks, too, from the linebacker position. So good production there from Campbell. Maybe they spent a little much on him, but it's only one year. They had the money to do it. So I like what Arizona has done throughout free agency. Let's now go to the Denver Broncos because they did something that I liked. If you watch the show, you'll know that I'm not the biggest Joe Flacco fan, and they released the veteran quarterback. And I almost laughed because Adam Schefter, when he tweeted this out, people still refer to Joe Flacco as the Super Bowl MVP. That was back in 2012. I was a sophomore in college, for goodness sake. I mean, it's true, though. He did it win. is true. He is a Super Bowl MVP. It just hasn't he's happened really elite. Uh, in quite a yeah, He's not elite uh, anymore. Obviously, Drew Locke's the guy there. Uh, I wonder what Flacco's future is. I mean, I don't. Th I wouldn't. I wouldn't want him as a quarterback on my team. He's going to have to be a backup. Yeah. The biggest problem with Flacco, the he reason why I don't like him, is not only is his head too big in like reality, but it's actually too big. Like, yeah, he's he got attitude he, problems. He, he did not he's this unbelievable player. He didn't handle the demotion in Baltimore well when Lamar Jackson took that job. He didn't have a great attitude last year. Uh, you know, when he got injured and Drew Locke took the job, he's not a starting caliber player anymore. And I'm with you. If I have a young quarterback, yeah, it's nice to learn from a veteran. I don't think Drew. I don't think Joe Flacco is the guy though you bring in to do that. Totally agree. So right now, I think of let's say two notable quarterbacks on free agent market. So we're gonna play a game here, okay? Who's the better quarterback? Type F for Joe Flacco, or type W for Jameis Winston. Now Flacco, he doesn't throw nearly the amount of interceptions as Winston. However, mm -hmm. I do think Winston has a little bit more talent. For me, I'm going to type my W. Well, and especially at this point in their careers, right? I mean, Flacco's clearly beyond his prime. Jameis Winston, you know, say what you want about him. He's still a young player. I think he still has a lot of upside. So I think W is clearly the answer. And I think our viewers agree. Lots of W's flying in. So keep those votes coming in here in the comments section. All right, we got a special goal for you, and we have a special challenge as well. So our boss has said, if Harrison and I get 200 new subscribers, we get a raise. So I'm asking for help here, okay? We got 1,000 people watching. 1,000 people watching, and we need to get to 200 new subscribers by the end of this live show. So if this is the first time that you've seen the show, just go ahead, scroll on down, and click subscribe. I see some super we chats got coming six in. in. Six new subs already. Six new subs. 16 new subs. There we go. Click wow. that subscribe button. Help us out a little bit. You help us out, maybe uh, Harrison and I, you know, we can go back and wet the whistle as well. Venmo is also at MitchellRens365. Seriously, though, click the sub, turn on the notifications. We're going to be keeping you up to date as possible. The big C, it ain't slowing us down. Now let's go to the Los Angeles Rams because maybe we're just talking about them today. Jared Goff getting paid. Yeah, I mean, he already got paid, but he's getting paid more because <laughs> he has a big roster blowing. bonus coming in, $21 million. My favorite stat, I don't even know if stat's the right word, my favorite thing about any NFL contract right now is 
Jared Goff's dead cap hit for uh, if he were to get cut. <laughs> Look at 94 this. million. That's like half of the NFL salary cap. That's insane. Imagine not being very good at your position and having a $94 million dead cap hit in 24. I don't think he's as bad as like you and Tom think, but he's he, definitely over. He's not top 10. No. Jared he's Goff not. isn't a top he's 10. He's not a top 10. Is he, is he a top 15 quarterback? Yeah, he's top 15. Oh, I don't know about that. He was really good two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. That's because he had Todd Gurley rushing for 17 touchdowns. <laughs> but, like, when you're going out there, you're paying a quarterback this much money. You need to see a little bit more production, in my opinion. Yeah. However, the $94 million cap hit, that was the real story here. So, we're going to ask you guys this question. Is Jared Goff the most overpaid quarterback in the NFL? We want you to type Y for yes, or we want you to type N for no. I think it's yes. <laughs> Even though I just defended him a little bit, I do think he is probably the I mean, most Rob overpaid. says he's a top 20 quarterback. A lot of whys. There is a lot of whys in the yeah. comment section, and I don't blame you. I think when you look at what he's done, he's also had, I think, a lot of help. I mean, there's been... They've had a great defense. They've had an amazing running game. Incredible receivers. Oh, Sean McVay is one of the best in the business when it comes to scheming. So Cena. he's been he's been in a nice situation. There's no doubt. Cena, Lots of wise. A lot of wise. If you haven't already liked the show, please do. Appreciate everyone that's tuned in right now live. Let's continue the show. We're gonna rock it on. We're gonna go a little bit quicker here. Adrian Colbert. He is re-signed, and uh, for one year, 1.775 million. He was not tendered yesterday as an RFA. He started 17 games in his career. I mean, you're looking at the Dolphins. I think they're just trying to add a little bit of depth here at the uh, safety position. Let's go now to the Carolina Panthers. They also had a wide receiver, Keith Kirkwood. Yeah, played under Matt Rule at Temple back in his college days, so there's a connection there. Some teams were interested. He opted to go uh, play uh, in Carolina with a head coach that he is familiar with, so not a super big surprise there. You want to take over this one since you run our Bear show? Sure, why not? Uh, the uh, <laughs> terrible Cornelius Lucas oh, wow. has uh, signed with the, uh, the Washington, oh, Washington Redskins. Oh, uh, haymakers. He was not good last year, guys. <laughs> uh, started in eight games, wasn't very good. I think if you're reading the tea leaves here, the Redskins need tackle depth because Trent Williams ain't going to play there. That's fair. I mean, he's not going to be there. They're going to trade him. I, he doesn't want to play in Washington. So they bring at least, you know, a, a guy who started at tackle in the NFL, and Cornelius Lucas. Well, Cornelius Lucas, you might be getting some hate mail from him pretty soon. Let's go to a 49ers player because, uh, well, I can't say 49ers player anymore. Mike Person released. Now he's just a normal person. So they released a starting guard. And he has started 14 games for the Niners. And this offensive line, I do think, is uh, probably the main reason why they can run the football. I'll be interested to see what happens here with Mike Person. Let's go to Joe Looney of the Dallas Cowboys. He's been re-signed. The Cowboys have lost a lot of players, but he was a big player here that took over for Travis Frederick. Yeah, sneaky good re-signing. He started the entire 2018 season at center uh, for the Dallas Cowboys while Frederick was doing with that autoimmune disease. Can play center, can play guard. So a versatile backup offensive lineman there for Dallas. Now here are some other players that signed today. Remember, we are doing an NFL free agency tracker, so we're just trying to keep you up to date. When I saw a tweet come out that Brian Mitchell signed with the Buccaneers, my first statement honestly was, Who's Bryant Mitchell? But here you go. That's what we're doing here at Chat Sports. Also, Torrey McTire, he's here for now for the Bengals. And then Will Redmond. Got a super chat rolling in here from my man, Ricky. Do the 49ers go for Todd Gurley? By the way, Kuzma said that the hand sanitizer doesn't work and it's a scam. Thoughts? Do the 49ers go for Todd Gurley? I say no. I think they already have enough running backs. Yeah, let's focus on that first part. I don't think Kuzma is qualified to speak on uh, anything related to the big C. But uh, why would they go for Gurley? The scheme, the scheme is what makes that go. They don't need to overpay Correct. for a guy like Todd Gurley. It'd be interesting. If his market dries up, sure, but you got Coleman, uh, Mostert's in the mix there. Uh, I think they just restructured Jarek McKinnon. Does yep. he finally get healthy? Um, we will see, <laughs> but I don't see the 49ers as a landing spot for Todd Gurley. Why for yes and for no in the comments? Do you think that the 49ers could go after Todd Gurley? Heck, how about this? Shout out who your favorite team is, and heck, shout out would you want them to go after Todd Gurley? So appreciate the Super Chats. You can get your questions here on our show by Super Chatting. Speaking of Super Chats, this I like. So, Tom, mm. he uh, he made us late, so we're going to get a little bit of punishment on him. So, if we get a $75 Super Chat today, okay, we will make Tom twerk on air. And does Tom know about this? No. That's what makes it great. So, if we get a $75 Super Chat, <laughs> I'll give you a follow back on Twitter. 
Harrison will give you a follow back on Twitter. But most importantly, we are going to make Tom twerk live on the show. We need to clarify, too. It's not 75 cumulative. Like, it's got to be one super chat worth $75. So, dream big. That's what we're doing here at Chat Sports. If you want to see Tom twerk, got to do a $75 super chat. It would be entertaining, and Tom would not, ha would not be Tom happy would about be it. Tom would be so upset. So, let's get this. Let's get this. Get we're going to get him. We would really appreciate it because that's the reason why we were a little bit late. Tom was uh, – I'm not even sure what the heck he was doing. So, <laughs> Uh-oh, I think you may have figured out. <laughs> so, if abort, we get a abort. $75 super chat, we will make Tom twerk. And Tom has just heard wind of this. Tom, how, how do you feel – how do you feel about this? I never signed up for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Tom's two cents. So if we get a $75 super chat I got for that, by we the lower end of the show, 50. <laughs> maybe we'll lower it. Who knows? Uh-oh, Tom is mad. It's uh -oh. all good. He's big mad. All right, we got 1,400 people right now. Maybe somebody start a GoFundMe and then all one account and then just load it up in there. On a serious note, the easiest way to get your questions on the show is to Super Chat. Also, use hashtag NFL to help producer Dylan get your questions on the show. We got Levanta Rogers here. And remember, Super Chats and use hashtag FA to get your questions on the show. I would give my Chicago Bears a real chance to get girly, maybe 35 40%. NFL, if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers get girly and AB, what record do you see them ending up with? So you answer the Bears, I'll handle the Tampa Bay question. Yeah, I, I just don't like that for the Bears. You just drafted David Montgomery uh, last year in the draft. I thought he played well as a rookie last year. You got Tariq Cohen. They don't have a ton of cap space. I don't see them going in that direction. And for the Bucs... What do you think about the Bucks? Side of I this? think the Bucks would be a pretty interesting move here. I don't really know how likely it is that they bring in AB, but if you're a team that all you really have is uh, Ronald Jones and Peyton Barber, maybe go out and add a Todd Gurley. I will say I think it's between Todd Gurley and Melvin Gordon will be the starting running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm -hmm. Appreciate the super chat. Let's go to Jason Wolf here. Is Seattle wasting cap space? Russ asks four stars. Four stars, so like other star players is what he means there. Um, well, when you pay your quarterback $35 million, it kind of is hard to get other superstars, right? I mean, I think they would like to keep Jadavion Clowney, but he wants a lot of money, so they're not going to overpay for him. They're going to wait, see what his market is. Um, I don't know what else to say other than that, other than Seattle has made a couple of interesting moves. They've been pretty quiet overall, though, in free agency. Keep an eye out for Clay Matthews to Seattle, the connection with head coach Pete Carroll. Use hashtag FA to get your questions on the show. We're going to do a live free agency Q&A. So if you're watching this live and you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We need to get 200 by the end of the show. And if you haven't turned on your notifications, make sure you do that as well. We have a super chat rolling in here from Spencer Cook. Appreciate you. Clay Matthews to the Raiders. Rams just released him. Well, you take I that personally one. don't really want Clay Matthews. I understand that he had eight sacks, but he is your old school linebacker and I know what the Raiders want right now it's not the old school linebacker they want somebody that's pretty versatile they went out they got a Carl Nassib who I think is going to play linebacker slash defensive end for this team you have a player in Corey Littleton who's a great coverage linebacker then you also went out and got Nick Wachowski so for me I am uh, personally good on Clay Matthews. I also don't like Matthews in 4-3 schemes as much Bingo. I think he's much better in a 3-4 scheme so I don't really like that fit. Totally agree. Let's go to Triple X. Uh, any chance of the Cowboys trading for Anthony Harris or Jamal Adams? I mean, if you're going to pick one of those, Anthony Harris is the more likely one. Yeah, look, the Adams thing, it's, you it's, know. It's the name. It's, it's like, it's the new Earl Thomas. Like, oh, he's from the Dallas area. It hadn't gone super smooth with the Jets. The Cowboys are going to trade for him. That's not really how things work. They're not going to trade a lot of draft capital for Adams. I think Harris could be an option. Second round pick for Harris. Third round pick for Harris. That wouldn't surprise me. Got another super chat rolling in here from Ricky. Appreciate you. C.D. Lamb and Debo Samuel, deadly plus deadly in two years. I, I think, mean, look, if the 49ers don't re-sign Emmanuel Sanders, I think that number 13 pick, it's about 80% they're going to draft a receiver. But I is mean, it? But is it going to be C.D. Lamb or is it going to be you know Jerry, Jerry Judy? Because I think because I think if the Jets don't go out and re-sign Robbie Anderson, they got a draft. I think then they got a draft receiver and Jerry Judy or Lamb, and then I think the Raiders at pick twelve take either Jerry Judy or Lamb. So then maybe you go after a player like Henry Ruggs. Yeah. But the 49ers, I mean speed. That's something I think that they need on the outside. Let's go now to Jalen. 
Should the Broncos get Robbie Anderson or get a wide receiver in the NFL draft? Don't overpay for Robbie Anderson, Thank especially you. if you're a team not ready to win right now and the Broncos are not there yet. Draft a receiver, build with younger talent. I, Robbie Anderson needs to go to a team that has an established number one receiver and he can be the number two guy. That is where you can maximize his talent. Uh, yeah, they have Cortland Sutton and he'd be fun on the other side. I just don't think the Broncos are in win now mode. King Higgins question rolling in here now. Would Todd Gurley to the Bills make them Super Bowl contenders? I will say no because I don't think Todd Gurley. Now, if Todd Gurley's healthy, it's different because I think that defense is great. Yeah. I still don't think Josh Allen is a Super Bowl caliber quarterback. I just got to see more because we saw growth last year. We can did. He, can, he, can he go from We 20... also saw him kind of poop the bed once he got into the playoffs. That well, was he was rough great game. for three quarters and then yep. didn't finish the deal. I, you the know, bed. I <laughs> – Sure. I mean, it's his first playoff start. Matt Ryan lost his first three or four playoff games. We've seen that before. If he can take another step forward, my thing is, is forget, take Gurley, the name out of it. I don't think really any running back is the reason a team goes from a non-Super Bowl contender to a Super Bowl contender. I just don't. Okay. Super chat time. Adam Daughtry, are we keeping LDT? Yeah, loyal watcher of the Chiefs report. Appreciate that coming in, Adam. Um... He's owed him almost $9 million. The Chiefs guard is. Who's they LDT for those of you that aren't Laurent Chiefs Duvernay fans? Tardif. He's one of the starting Thank guards you. for the Chiefs. You could save $4 million by cutting him. I released a video earlier today on our Chiefs channel, youtube.com slash Chiefs CD. Talked about this possibility, so go check that out if you want. Um, I think it's a pretty good possibility. I want to see what they do with Watkins first because that's the easiest way to save money against the cap. But it is very, very possible, Adam. Adam, is your picture a hat? I think that's what it looks like. Looks oh. like a hard hat with the Chiefs logo. Well, speaking of hats, if anybody needs a hat, go to chatsports.com slash NFL hat. We got your favorite team's hats, all 32 of them. We got fitted. We got some straight bill hats as well, up to 45% off. Are you more of a curved brim or a straight brim? I think I'm more of a curved guy. Although I'm not I'm not the weird, like, curve it a ton guy. Like, that. that's too far. It also depends on the style of hat, you right? curve it to the left. That Chat literally makes no sense. Chatsports.com slash NFL hat. Seriously, though, hats up to 45% off. Yeah, that joke right over Harrison's head. Chatsports.com slash NFL hat. Super chat time. Young Jay, does luck come out of retirement to Guys. play for the Pats? I'll tell you what. It would be fun. But the Colts have his rights. I understand. So if he returns, they would have to release him. No. Like, it's not... You know, it's not like he can retire, then a year later, I'm back and I can sign with any team. That's not how it works. So, um, it'd be entertaining, <laughs> but I got I really think he's content with retirement. We've heard no chatter of him wanting to come back. So, I, I'd be surprised if we ever saw him play again. This one's coming in from Hannah. Harrison Twerk, oh my hashtag gosh. This FA. Is, this is my fiancé. Um, if we get a $100 super chat... <laughs> I will uh no, if I we will get, twerk. If we get a seventy-five dollar <laughs> super chat if you really want to see somebody twerk. We got someone ready for you. Don't I mean, worry. I'm sorry, but if she's asking for it, I understand this says you know we're gonna make Tom. My soon to be air. wife is asking me that question. Wow. I think I think you need to go home and I think you need to twerk for her for free. Man, I may have to. <laughs> looks like that's uh looks like I know what I'm doing and uh Two hours. Okay. If we get a hundred dollar super chat today, Harrison, he's gonna twerk on air. He said it himself. He said it himself. We're I, gonna put it on I'll Instagram, it. Twitter. If we get a hundred dollar super chat. A hundred dollar super chat. Okay. You're gonna twerk on air. All oh, right. I saw money come up and I got excited. <laughs> Who did it? Who Ooh, did I'm, it? I'm sweating bullets. I'm getting Blake, nervous. Blake, <laughs> Blake, you gave me a heart attack. I appreciate the super chat. Much love. Blake. <laughs> We were close. We just got to bump that up a little bit more. We just got to move the yeah. decimal point. Oh, man. I really – I saw the blue come up, and I'm like, no way. We did it. <laughs> that was, was like, fast. That was awesome. Blake, appreciate you. Oh, appreciate one. everyone who's super chatting in right now. $100 super chat. My man's twerking. Let's go to Jarek. Somebody needs to get a pick. Will Melvin <laughs> Gordon make more than $7.5 million per year? I don't think so. I, I think Austin Eckler is more valuable – with what he could bring with his versatility, and he got about six. So, I think the only way Melvin Gordon gets more than 7.5 is 
one-year deal. And yeah. I think he should take a one-year deal, prove it anyway. One-year eight million or something like he that. He does have 36 rushing touchdowns the last four years, but I don't he's know how good. much. He's good. He's good. He's just not, you know, like a Christian McCaffrey. And if you're not one of those guys, I think teams have started to figure out you don't pay him that much. Agreed. Super chat time. Matt, 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 Matt. I'm the Matt. I'm the Matt. Oh, no, that's the map. Uh, chances Chris Godwin gives up the number 12 to Brady. He has to. 100%. The yeah, he's getting paid. The question is, is how much is he going to get? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. oh yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, gosh. Who did it? Who did it? Oh, my God. Whoever. I don't even know how to do it. make her dance. I got I to gotta look. <laughs> Let's go. So Stay. I got to move? Yeah. Oh, he's got to go. I got to move? Yep. So Harrison's going to go oh, into Studio B God. from what it sounds like, and he's going to start twerking. So you're going to be able to see the entire body of Harrison twerk, okay? He's flustered. He's flustered. So I don't know the name. Motitala, if whatever. <laughs> Yo, I'm speechless right now. We will continue the NFL Q&A. If you want to continue to bring up some questions, Dylan, I'll answer some questions. We're going to send Harrison over to Studio B because he's twerking, because bands are making her dance. Okay, let's go to Holden here. What's up, Holden? Uh, can you make a... That's true. Tom has to as well. Uh, can you make a lower third, Dylan, that says they're twerking? So Holden says, who will be first, Melvin Gordon or Todd Gurley? I think that Todd Gurley actually ends up getting signed first because I think that he is a little bit more of a notable name. Plus, I still think that he's a better running back at this point. I'm going to slide into the middle, okay? I'm going to slide into the middle so you guys can see me. We'll get situated here. But uh, how about this? Type G for Gordon or type T for Todd. Next question from question mark, question mark. Should the Bears get Robbie Anderson or Emmanuel Sanders? I'm going to go with Emmanuel Sanders. I think that he's a better player at this point. I think Robbie Anderson's fun and he's a little bit younger, but I would rather go get Emmanuel Sanders for one year instead of paying $13, $14 million for a player like Robbie Anderson. We'll ask you this question now. Who is the best NFL free agent available? I want you to throw it in the comment section. Let me know who you guys think is the best NFL free agent available. We got over 1,700 people watching us here live on YouTube. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do. We set a goal, 200 new subscribers by the end of the show. Heck, I would really, really appreciate that. If we can get the 500 new subscribers by the end of the show, heck, I'll go into Studio B and I'll start twerking, okay? We're going to have some fun here. If you have never heard of us before, I promise you the Big Slee, Big Slee, the Big C, it's not going to slow us down. I got some creepy man coming underneath me. It's really wearing. Hello me. there. Oh God! Someone clipped that for me because that's straight out of Star Wars. That was. I've never seen Star Wars. Oh, we got super chat, Tom. Right, so what are my, the Pats doing laptop. at quarterback or in the draft? Uh, I don't know. Jordan, how about this? How about Jordan Love? Ooh, ooh, ooh! We have a mock draft coming out soon. How about that? Mock draft. We also have released a video. Oh, I have to do it too? <coughs> All right, I'll, I'll take the steps down. <laughs> oh, and I'm back by myself. So what are the Pats doing at quarterback? I'll also say this, Blake. We released a video on the top six quarterbacks that are most likely to be the Patriots starting quarterback next year. Go check it out. Okay, Blake, just another reason that you should subscribe to our channel. Turn on the notifications. We make videos like this all the time. Appreciate everyone that's watching. Harrison, he's in Studio B. Tom's going to go to Studio B, too. They're twerking because my man Mo Tala sent in a $100 super chat, which, by the way, is tied for our record for the highest super chat ever sent in. You're the man. Let's go to Miguel. What up, Miguel? Appreciate that you're watching. Ebron to the Packers, a good fit. I think it would be an okay fit, but I'm also at the point of me where I don't really know if Eric Ebron is that great of a tight end. I understand they just released Jimmy Graham, which, by the way, that was a good decision. However, I don't really want to buy into Eric Ebron. I think the Eric Ebron hype was really good for one year because Andrew Luck loves tight ends. We got another one coming in from Matt, 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 Matt. And it's around Des Bryant. Does Des Bryant ever return? Seems like he's forgotten. I don't really know if it seems like he's forgotten, right? I mean, he's still on Instagram. He's still posting some things. 
I think if you're a team and you're going to bring in Des Bryant, you're going to bring him in to be a complimentary wide receiver. You're not bringing him in to be a one. You're not bringing him in to be a two. And even Des said it himself last year that he wants to come in and just be a piece. So if you want to pay him to be a piece, maybe a side piece, that's what you got to do because that's what Des Bryant is. Let's go. You're too easy. Atlantis Gaming, who is the best new quarterback in the past three? Wait, who's the best new quarterback in the past three years? The best quarterback that's come in the league the past three years. One, two, three, Patrick Mahomes. So I'm I'm back here with producer Dylan. He's weighing in with me. So if you guys want to throw in who you think's been the best quarterback the last three years, let me know. Let me know. I see a lot of people trying to get their questions on the show. The way that you get your questions on is to use hashtag FA, or you can super chat and we'll put it on here. So we got Bosco Gamer. He's coming up, one of our most loyal watchers. One of our most loyal watchers. Who else should the Cardinals sign? I mean, as active as they've been in free agency, I mean, you could go out and potentially look at I mean, you're, run, you're good at running back. You're good at receiver. You're definitely good at receiver. You could go and look at maybe some defensive players. Um, let me see here. Ha-ha, Clinton Dix I think would be intriguing. I know Logan Ryan's still out there. I think, though, if you're the Cardinals, you just start investing in the draft because right now they do still have pick number seven. So they're doing a lot, a lot of good things. Got a weigh-in coming in now. What do you think? Which team has had the best free agency? So throw that in the comment section. Because coming up here in a little bit, we're going to get into our winners and we're going to get into our losers section of which teams that we think are the winners and the losers of free agency. Because that's how that works. So, <laughs> let me know who you think has had the best free agency. I'm seeing a lot of Cardinals. I'm seeing a lot of Buccaneers. Miami, the Chargers, okay, the Ravens, they got a vote in there. <laughs> Todd Gurley got fired. That's a fact. So, seeing a lot. Okay, so I want you to help us reach... 200 subs by the end of the show. So we're 135 away. So I said this. We get a raise, obviously, if we get to 200 subs. I'm going to twerk if we get to 500 new subs by the end of the video. So we already got Tom and Harrison. They're in Studio B getting ready to twerk because my man sent in a $100 Super Chat. So before I show you their video, because they're in Studio B, they're getting ready, I want you to hit the subscribe button. I want you to turn on the notifications because we got to get to 200 new subs by the end of the show. All right, you guys ready? It's time to kick it over now to Studio B where Harrison and Tom, they're going to twerk. Oh, get it. <laughs> get it. Twerk it. Can they hear me? Oh. What? You you want Tom has done this before. <laughs> yeah. Alright, we're losing audience quick though. So who's the better twerker? Type H for Harrison or type T for Tom. I know that was painful to watch, but we did say if we got a $100 super chat, we would make them twerk. And I think Tom, he wants to say a word or two. Uh, you can't really see me well. Uh, Harrison was grunting during that. Uh, there was very clearly a uh, 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 as it was going on. And it was super weird. <laughs> 
So we appreciate we we appreciate every single person that's tuned in. Yeah. So who was the better twerker? If you want to say and for neither, hey, I don't uh, blame you. That was pretty hard to watch. So we got over. I've never been this embarrassed in my life. Eighteen hundred people watching right now. Appreciate the super chat that again came in from Motala. If we he get said, a thousand dollar super chat, <laughs> I'll go back in there. <laughs> No, I mean, if we get a hundred, if we get another hundred dollar super chat, I'll go in and I'll twerk this time. I think that's fair. So, okay, continue to get your votes in. Who's the better twerker? Ugh. I think we should get back into some real stuff. Let's get back into stuff some that NFL. people care about. Yes, yeah. let's 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 start getting back into it. So use hashtag FA to get your questions here on the show. We'll go back to uh, answering some questions. <coughs> We'll get some questions here in a minute. Uh, we're trying to, uh, the production team, us on air, we're trying to catch up with uh, everything we just did. It's been a little bit hectic here in the office. All right, let's go to Christopher using hashtag FA. Uh, any <coughs> chance the Seahawks let Clowney walk, as long as he doesn't twerk, since he hasn't taken their offer? Yeah, I I, I definitely think so. I, I, if you're Jadavion Clowney, you won over $20 million. If I'm an NFL team, I personally I don't give him that much. I would never give. Jude I think I draw the line at 18. I, I don't give him 20 plus. I mean, I don't think I don't see how you could possibly give a player who's never had over 10 sacks 20 plus million. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. Let's go now to the next question. Not Josh T H G. Which is a better trade, Hopkins trade or Slate trade? I guess it depends what side you're talking about. If you're the Cardinals, it's easily the Hopkins trade. Yeah, I mean. This, the Hopkins trade is war. I think what he's saying is like who got less value, and the Texans still got less because they took on a bad contract in the process. Yeah, you didn't get a first or second for Slay, but he was going to walk after next year anyway. Correct. Hopkins wasn't going anywhere. I know. He probably would have retired as a member of the Houston Texans if you wanted him to, and you just trade him for David Johnson and a second round pick. That's terrible. Not good whatsoever. So we have a goal. We want to get to 200 subs by the end of the show. We are 76 away. We appreciate everyone that is already subscribed. But the reason that you should subscribe to our show and to our channel, not only because we twerk, but it's because we give you the latest NFL news and rumors. The Big C, it's not slowing us down. And sometimes, some of you might not have liked what you just saw, but laughter is the best medicine. And I think times like this, sometimes that's what you need. So go ahead, click that subscribe button, like the video, and for some reason, if you forget what our channel is, it's youtube.com slash chatsports TV. What's going on? I want to welcome in our new audience here. We got over 2,000 new subs this past week, and Chat Sports, we are a live and interactive YouTube channel where we talk about NFL news, rumors, and a lot more than that. And today's show, we're doing the NFL winners and losers of free agency. Let's talk about the first winner here. We got the Arizona Cardinals. DeAndre Hopkins, enough said. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as soon as they made that trade, that was going to make them one of, if not the biggest free agency winners, regardless of what day of free agency it is now. Look, that's that's highway robbery. You can't pull off this trade in Madden. Uh, they gave up David Johnson in a second for DeAndre Hopkins, essentially. They swapped fourth-round picks, basically, as well. That's that's a joke. I mean, David Johnson got benched at the end of last <laughs> season because he was so bad, and Kenyon Drake was so much better, and they get the best receiver in the NFL for this. I it's mean, laughable. It's, it's a disgrace is what it is. Bill O'Brien <laughs> should be fired. The Texans just set themselves back a couple of years with this trade. Like, I mean, honestly. not only that, you, you, how are you going to be able to look Deshaun Watson in the eyes and say, hey, we want to build around you and we want to bring you in as our, as our leader for the future. If I'm Deshaun Watson, this move tells me one thing. We're not trying to win and I'm trying to go elsewhere. I agree. So we want you to get your votes in right now, okay? Will the Cardinals be a playoff team? next season so will the cardinals be a playoff team next season we want you to type y for yes or type n for no it's a tough question because of that division the nfc west with the seahawks the rams and the 49ers but there's an extra playoff spot yep and i think with the rams moves and we may be talking about them in the in our loser section in a minute there's an argument to be made that arizona has passed them in that division okay I'll say this, though. It is pretty split right now. I'll still say 60% of the votes are coming in with uh, N for no. Let us know if the Cardinals make the playoffs. Y for yes, N for no. One team that I thought was going to make the playoffs last year didn't happen. The Cleveland Browns, but they are winners here in free agency. There's no excuses in 2020 for the Browns. You had a ton of talent last year. You had a terrible head coach and an arrogant quarterback, and it didn't work, and a receiver who was a diva in Odell Beckham Jr. You hit the reset button. You got Kevin Stefanski. Look at the players they've added. 
Hooper, you got a left tackle in Jack Conklin. Carl Joseph is a good player. Billings, got a lot of pieces in free agency to an already talented roster. If you don't make the playoffs next year, you're just cursed. Like, I, I, I don't know, like, what else the Browns can do at this point to put together a winning roster because they have really good talent in Cleveland. The next winner here, it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You go out, you get Tom Brady. What about this, Harrison? The Super Bowl this year is in Tampa Bay. Will the Buccaneers become the first team ever to play a Super Bowl at home? I don't think so, but I think they're a playoff contender. And, okay. I mean, that's a lot more than they've been in a long time. Second longest playoff drought in the NFL. You get Tom Brady. You bring back Shaq Barrett and Jason Pierre-Paul. And supposedly a lot of free agents are interested in going there. Maybe Todd Gurley ends up in Tampa. Who Maybe knows? Antonio Brown. That would surprise me. But Tom Brady loves him, so you never know. Obviously, Tom Brady didn't have the best season last year, but I still think this is a huge upgrade from Jameis Winston. Uh, I cannot wait to see him play in a Tampa Bay uh, jersey because that's going to look incredibly awkward. So he had 24 touchdowns last year, eight interceptions, and 4,057 yards. So we want you to be Nostradamus here and predict Tom Brady's 2020 stats. So let me know how many touchdowns you think he's going to have. Let me know how many yards you think he's going to have. And let me know how many interceptions that the GOAT is going to throw in 2020. We can give some shout-outs here to the people that come on the show. We got Quinton. We got Chucky Bourne, Apex Amrit. Appreciate everyone watching. Project Tom Brady's 2020 stats. Let's go to another winner here, the Los Angeles Chargers. And I remember you and I, we both looked at each other and we said, I cannot believe that they got Chris Harris for two years, $20 million. And it's up to $20 million. It's $17.5 million with the $2.5 million in incentives. It, it's the steal of free agency. I mean, it's the best contract that, uh, best value contract that's happened. You add a good tackle in Brian Balaga. Winville Joseph is a good defensive tackle. They're loaded throughout this roster, Mitch, except for quarterback. Is Terod Taylor the guy? Do they go after a Cam Newton? Does a rookie start? I don't know, but if they get above average quarterback play, there's no reason why this team can't contend at the highest level. But now we have a special deal that I want to bring attention to, chatsports.com slash jersey deal. If you need a new NFL jersey, if you want a new NFL jersey, we found these unbelievable Nike jerseys because their price dropped under 80 so you can see on screen $79.99. We'll put the link in the chat. We'll put the link in the description because if for some reason you don't remember chatsports.com slash jersey deal, we got you taken care of. If you had to get a new jersey, okay, if you had to get a new jersey, you can't say one that you've already said before in the past two days. So I can't go DeAndre Hopkins Cardinals jersey? Correct. Okay. you got to get me a new jersey. If you all oh, had man. to get a new jersey, who would you get? Who would you get? Who would you get? Because now i got to think about it. Now you got to think about it? Now i got to think about it. Saquon Barkley. Big Saquon Barkley fan, Penn Stater. That's who I would go out and get. I feel like you've said that before. I've said Saquon Wait. before. Randall Cobb, Texans jersey. Who says no? Chris Godwin, number 12, will replace it, put Brady on the back. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one. No, I would never. Nick, hey, Nick Foles, Bears jersey. I would never. That? I'm seeing a lot of Julio Jones in there. Maybe if you're a Dolphins fan, you go get a Dolphins jersey. But speaking of Miami, they're a winner. Good for Miami, man. Good for Miami. They kept spending, and uh, I like most of the deals they've uh, they've pulled off. You know, you get Byron Jones, the best cornerback on the market. You sign Sa Shaq Lawson and Kyle Van Noy. Uh, Emmanuel Ogba comes in as well. He can help rush the passer. Don't love the Eric Flowers signing, but he's a starting caliber guard at least. Jordan Howard. it would be interesting to see if they're in the Todd Gurley mix uh, to get another running back there. They to got help, money. Help replace Kenyon Drake, uh, who they traded last year. And maybe the biggest part of this is they don't have to face Tom Brady <laughs> twice a year anymore. Right. I mean, Tom Brady has won the AFC East 17 times. I also really want to make note, though, of the Kyle Van Noy deal. It was four years, 51, a solid player there. You saw the Dolphins bring in also some players that used to pay, play for the New England Patriots. Yep. Don't be surprised if the Patriots are one of the worst teams in that division. I'm just saying. So now we got biggest free agency winners so far. So throw it in the comments. If you watch this video live on YouTube or on Facebook, who do you think is the biggest free agency winner so far? Your vote, Harrison? It's tough. I still got to go the Cardinals. I, the Bucks are close for me because anytime you can get an icon like Tom Brady to come lead your franchise, even if I it's only for a year or two. I believe their ticket sales are, have already gone up 15%. That ownership might be the biggest winner, the <laughs> Bucks ownership. But in terms of on the field, I will go with the Cardinals. Yeah, I'm probably going to go with the Cardinals as well, getting DeAndre Hopkins. But if you're talking about just dollar bills and cents for that organization. Oh, it's the Bucks and it's not even close. It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So we set a goal before our live show, and we had to hit 200 new subscribers by the end of it. We are 55 away. So right now we got 2,170 people watching us live. 
and I don't think that everybody here is a subscriber. You know how I know that? Because the last time I checked, only 53% of our views come from subscribers. So if you love NFL seven news. Seven new subs already. Seven new subs. So we're 48 away. So if you love NFL news, if you love rumors, if you love trying to predict where Tom Brady's going to play, where Todd Gurley's going to go, Melvin Gordon, we're going to be making a whole bunch of videos. I want to mention this as well. Uh, our draft coverage is going to ramp back up. Don't worry. For you new subscribers, we do a lot of NFL draft stuff. Our guy Tom Downey, he's one of the best in the biz. He's got a new mock draft coming out very, very soon. So go ahead and subscribe. Be out on the lookout for that NFL mock draft. Time to get to the losers. And if you see a loser on screen, I want you to type L. So everyone, you better spam L for the Houston Texans. Bill O'Brien fired. L, F, oh my Lord. It's it's just one of, every time I see the trade, I still can't believe it. <laughs> I mean, it's literally one of the worst trades in sports history. Not just NFL history, yeah. sports history. You take on a bad running back who's owed more than $11 million dollars and you only get a second-round pick for the best receiver in the NFL. <laughs> it makes Who does sense. that? Not only that, DeAndre Hopkins is such an icon for the city of Houston, but he's also just such like a class act. I mean, you're dealing right now in the NFL where you got divas like A.B. OBJ's not afraid to speak his mind either. Stephon Diggs is doing everything he can to possibly get traded. And then there was the whole you know report that came out about uh, Bill O'Brien comparing DeAndre Hopkins to Aaron Hernandez. And what does DeAndre Hopkins do? Tweets and, like, kind of smashes the room. Yeah, he basically says, class guys, act. not a big deal. I'm moving on. I'm excited to go play in Arizona. DeAndre Hopkins is an absolute class act. So this was a horrible trade, but this is a really cool question. Who's going to have more wins Thanks. in 2020? Type T for Texans or type C for Cardinals? I appreciate that you think it's a cool question. I, I thought really hard about it. Um, <laughs> I, I can't is, tell if you're serious It's It's tough because the Texans division is much more manageable still. Agreed. But the Cardinals got a lot better. Um, yeah. I'll probably still type T for Texans because Deshaun Watson, I believe in him that much. And we'll get some shout-outs going for you guys as well. So type T or C. Got a lot of coming in. It seems pretty split, by the way, Mitch. I'll type my T for Texans, but uh, I think they're going to be a very similar base team in terms of wins and losses. Michael Corley agrees with you. Daniel Nearson agrees with you. Ozzy Cooley. E. Walls, but he's going to go. E. Walls is going to type C. Kevin Otto type C. Shelly type C. Travis. Bucks are winning it all this year. Oh, boy. Type T for Texans, or you could type C for Cardinals. Let's go to the next loser here. It's the Los Angeles Rams, and they are losing pieces left and right. Yeah, they cut Todd Gurley and Clay Matthews, and that was about uh, the fifth and sixth starters they lost, <laughs> Mitch. Uh, Corey Littleton, see ya. He's out in Vegas. Dante Fowler, he's hanging out in Atlanta. Michael Brockers is gone as well. They signed Andrew Whitworth through a three-year deal, even though he's 38 years old. And then they gave Leonard Floyd... $10 million with incentives, with incentives up to $13 million. The Bears were like, get this guy out of town, and they just gave him $10 million. Uh, I like the Rams. I like how aggressive they are. I don't know what they're doing this offseason. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, not that I totally disagree with them letting Todd Gurley yeah, go. Yeah, I actually don't hate this part of it. It's just one of those things. You're paying a player who's not going to be on your team a lot of money, and yep. I get what he's done in the past. I think, you know, two years ago, probably the best running back in the NFL but those knee injuries are really, really starting to rack up on him. So Harrison's going to make a video coming up, uh, what, tomorrow, I believe? And we want to know where you think Todd Gurley's going to play. He's going to tell you where he's going to play. Yeah, I'll have my top five Gurley destinations, so be on the lookout for that. But we want to ask you guys right now, where do you think Todd Gurley will play in 2020? We made it. 200 subs. We did it. We appreciate you. So, oh, boy. Set a new goal? Yeah, I said it while you were twerking. Oh, if we wow. get 300 more subs, I'll go in Studio B and I'll twerk at the end of the show. Sound good? So if we can get to 300 more subs, we won't do it during this like section and we won't do it during the next Q&A. I can't. I'm stumbling over my words because now I'm tripped up here. We'll do it at the end of the show. So 300 new subs and I guess I'm twerking. So if you want twerk, NFL news and rumors, follow us. I guess we're chat twerk now, not even chat sports. All right, let's get to another loser. I'll be a loser if I have to twerk. Minnesota Vikings. I still feel like a loser. It's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I mean, they were somewhat cap-strapped. Some of this was inevitable, but extending Kirk Cousins was not. They could have played 2020 out and see what happens. Instead, they extend him for two years and $66 million, which is a lot of money, although he is coming off a pretty good season. Trade away Stephon Diggs. 
I mean, I, I, just don't, I don't, don't mind know. the trade for Diggs because you did get a lot in return. What's the identity of this team now? Like, yeah, that's, I, the, I mean, that's the question. Is, it, it, are you building around Cousins? Like, I just don't know. I believe in Mike Zimmer. He's a great defensive mind, but when you lose, like, five legitimate starters, oh, yeah. it's tough, man. They're going to have to draft <laughs> extremely, extremely well. Plus, they only placed a second-round tender on Anthony Harris. If I'm an NFL team, I, I am that. going after Anthony Harris for only a mid-round tender. All right, next loser coming in, it's the New York Giants, and Dave Gettleman, they're just overpaying players. I like James Bradbury, but for three years, $45 million, a little bit too steep for me. Blake Martinez, I mean, you're paying him three years, $30 million. You won't it. find more empty stats than Blake Martinez. Over 140 tackles in three straight years, but I'm telling you right now, not a very good linebacker. Then Kyle Frackrell, and then the one that really confused me, Leonard Williams tagging him. Find you someone who loves interior defensive linemen as much as Dave Gettleman. It's like uh, Jameis Winston in tight end. So, New York Giants, they're a loser. Also, you got to put the New England Patriots as a loser. You lost the face of your franchise in Tom Brady. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, all thing, great things come to an end. We know that. But when you lose maybe the greatest quarterback, probably the greatest quarterback of all time, it's going to hurt, even if he's already declined. If we mentioned earlier with the Bucks, like their ticket sales are going to go down. The Patriots are like it's just oh, yeah. inevitable. Uh, and then on the field, look, they, they've gotten rid of a lot of players. This is probably not going to be a great year for the Patriots. Which That's is, just the reality. Just kind of crazy to say. And I know Tom Brady. There's a reason why they call him the goat. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that have Tom Brady jerseys. If you need a new jersey, you can see below the link chatsports.com slash jersey deal. You can get NFL jerseys under $80. If for some reason that you forget what the link is, we'll put it in the comments and we'll put it in the description below. Go get yourself a new jersey, chatsports.com slash jersey deal. So how about this question, Harrison? Who's going to replace Tom Brady? Because I think that's the multi-multi-million dollar question. Who's going to be the next quarterback of the Patriots? I mean, they're getting they're getting rid of everybody, which almost makes me think they're just going to roll with Jarrett Stidham next year. Oh, as goodness. crazy as that sounds. But, like, why would you go spend big on, like, Jameis Winston if you're getting rid of all your players? Well, you could go out and trade for a player, could draft a player. Cam Luckily Newton's for you, out there. I mean... We already made a video on the top quarterbacks to replace Tom Brady. Now, you're never going to actually, like, replace Brady. If you try, I don't think it's going to work out. Yeah. But who's going to be the next quarterback of the Patriots is this video. We rank the top six quarterbacks most likely. There's quarterbacks from the draft, quarterbacks from free agency. There's actually also a few quarterbacks in there that you might have to trade for. So we got a challenge. If we get 300 more subs... Apparently, I'm the one that's going to have to twerk now. So, Harrison and Tom, they twerked earlier for a $100 Super Chat. I said if we get 300 more subscribers, I'll I'll, uh, I'll twerk I'm going to throw Mitch under the bus, too. He also said if we get another $100 Super Chat, he would twerk in that scenario <laughs> as well. So, there's two ways he, he could twerk. 300 more subs, we got what? 2,300 people watching, 2,400? So, that's about an eighth of you guys. If you guys sub, then Mitch will twerk or... One more $100 Super Chat, and Mitch is going to get his dancing shoes on. So those are the two options if you want to see Mitch twerk. So let's get back in now to some free agency winners. We'll do a quick little recap here for y'all. We got the Cardinals. We got the Browns, the Buccaneers, Chargers, and Dolphins. Out of this list, Harrison, how about I want you to rank them? If you had to rank them, who would it be? I think the Cardinals and the Bucks are the top two here. Okay. I like what the other three teams have done, but if I had to go top two, I'd go Cardinals, Bucks. Okay, I'm actually with you there. Cardinals, Bucks. Then I might actually throw in the Browns as well. How about some losers? We got the Texans, the Rams, Vikings, Giants, Pats. Who's the biggest loser here? Uh, well, we should be asking who's the biggest loser besides the Texans because they're That's on their true. own level. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go Patriots because you can't. The impact of losing a guy like Tom Brady is immeasurable. I truly believe that it's gonna. If you had to measure it. It's gonna it take. <laughs> Can't measure it. If you super chat hundred dollars, I'll tell you what that <laughs> measurement would be. No, no. So here are the free agency losers: Texans, Rams, Vikings, Giants, Patriots. If you disagree with us, let us know in the comments section on YouTube. All right, let's get into a live Q and A. This one's going to be only around trades. So if you have any questions about trades, the way that you get on the show is to use hashtag trade or. You can super chat. That's going to tell producer Dylan to put you on the show. And if you're wondering, wait a minute, how do I get on the show? Easiest way is to subscribe, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. We got one coming in. Jacob Gudkowski, thoughts on Bill's offseason, any chance for Gurley? There's no K in that name, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I think they're in the mix for uh, Gurley. There's a K in that name. Okay, at the end, but you said Gutkowski. There's no Kowski. It's Gutowski. Big oh, difference there, Mitch. 
Uh, Bill, I think they're in the mix. Uh, I, it'd be fun. Josh Allen could use another weapon in that backfield. I like Devin Singletary, though. I, I don't want to take a ton of snaps away from him. Um, I would put them as like a secondary option for Todd Gurley. Okay. You got Jason Wolf, Seattle free agency loser, and Clowney only makes it worse. Ah, it's been a it's been a rough week for Jason. He doesn't like what the Seahawks have been doing. I know. Uh, we're, we're we're trying to help you out, Jason. We're speak it into existence. Um. I don't know if bringing back Clowney makes it worse because he's still a good player. Now, maybe if you sign him to $23 million a year, that's not great. But uh, I think bringing him back would still be a good I think option. one of the moves that the Seattle made earlier, like before the whole free agency Palooza start of that made me scratch my head, was going out and get Greg Olson that's for like seven, seven mil. I didn't really like that. I know that they have a lot of tight ends there already. So, Jason, sorry your Seahawks uh, are not having a good free agency. Let's go to stumbling upward. What's going to happen to Cam? It's going to get cut. Because no one knows what his medical situation is, and no team is going to trust an independent doc. And uh, you can't, and you, you can't, can't do it right you now. You can't get a legitimate, and you can't get a legitimate physical by an NFL mandated doctor right now. So, I think he's going to get cut. I think he's going to get cut. Stumbling upward. Appreciate the super chat. Who will be the next NFL player traded? You're watching NFL Daily by Chat Sports. I'm Mitchell Renz. That's Harrison Graham. We have a question because uh, I've bought in some jerseys and I want to know who I can hang on to. So who's going to be the next NFL player traded? Any predictions? Oh, man. Um, I would have said Cam Newton, but I don't think he can get a proper physical right now, so I think he's going to get cut. Um, Andy Dalton, how about that? I think Andy Dalton gets God. traded. You and Tom always take him from me. Sorry, Andy man. Dalton's the be good more, player. Be more creative. Be more. All right. A.J. Green. Tra trade. Okay, Actually, you know what? No. Yannick Ngakwe. There you go. I'm going to go with Yannick Ngakwe. Let us know in the comments who you think is going to be the next NFL player traded. If you have a jersey and that player gets traded, luckily for you, we're trying to hook you up with some more here. Go to chatsports.com slash jersey deal. Harrison and I, we found some pretty awesome deals, and these are Nike NFL jerseys. I also want to make an important note. It's not just the jerseys that you see on screen. So you can get your favorite team your favorite player, and all different colors. Yes, they even have the Color Rush ones as well. All available under $80. Harrison, <clears throat> as I clear my throat here, Nike NFL jerseys. Would you ever buy a white jersey? Oh, man. I don't know about you. I am actually no team white jersey. You're it not, does scare me. I like white jerseys. Oh, I love them. They look great. You just don't want to mess them up? I don't want to mess them up. Mm. So that's why like a, black, a, little more like a black Sam Darnold jersey, if I was a Jets fan, I'm, I'm going to go rep black. I might be with you. I'm more in on the color. Chatsports.com slash jersey deal. This question's coming in from Winston <laughs> Shan, and I think earlier in the week somebody uh, wanted me to get slapped, and that's what we do here at Chatsports, and Winston somehow gets these crazy snapshots. Who is a sleeper trade? O.J. Howard, $300 super chat, and Mitch has to ride Harrison like a horse. Okay, well, relax, Done. Winston. Done. You're, you're not making the, uh, making the $300 call. $300 super chat, and I ride you like a horse. I, I disagree with that. Yeah, if Dylan wants to come up here, that that's fine. I, $300 I, super chat, and I ride I, producer Dylan I, like a horse in Studio B. I already, ma I already made my bed once and laid in it. I ain't doing it again. Um, I, <laughs> OJ Howard is a sleeper, by the way. <laughs> You're going to gallop, Dylan, Dylan? Dylan also said he'll make horse sounds. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> That's at least the answer to the question. Uh, who do you think would be make sense for Howard? Uh, I mean, the Patriots, are, you definitely got to throw them yeah. into the mix. That's if they are actually trying to win. I also say the Green Bay Packers. If you're yeah. looking for a tight end, I think that would be a great fit there with Aaron Rodgers. And uh, I'm trying to think of another team off Houston top. Houston Texans, maybe. Houston Texans? Oh, God. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you got to try to think of a way how to convince Deshaun Watson to stay. So, again... $300 Super Chat. I'm going to ride producer Dylan like a horse, and he's going to neigh, apparently. And if we get 300 new subscribers, I'm going to twerk. Let's go to Swampasaurus318. What will it cost the Dolphins to get the first pick in the draft? What are their picks in round one? They got number five. They got five. I believe it's like 19 and 20. No, the Ra Raiders have 19. Oh, yeah. Uh, duh. Uh, they got three 18. first round picks. It would take all three of them and probably and a future some. second. Oh, see, I think it takes more than just the – the. I think it takes, like, four first-round picks, honestly. Five to one. Because it's Joe Burrow. They need a quarterback. When yeah. I go back and I look at the past uh, – the trade with the Rams and the Redskins, yeah, you're, I mean, yeah, they gave up, right. like, four first-round picks to go up and get Yeah, maybe it's all three this year, then your first next year. That's what you're looking at. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of picks. Let's go to Kevin Otto. It looks like he's a Bengals fan. What about Dalton to Jacksonville? It's an option. Uh, I don't. I actually like that idea. I haven't thought about it. Um, 
I personally just don't think it's going to happen. I think they're going to roll with Gardner Minshew. They have so many draft picks. I think they actually tank and maybe try to go out and get a top quarterback like a Justin Fields or a Trevor I, Lawrence. I, I think what they're going to do is they're going to play Minshew and they're going to say, look, if you play great, awesome. We found our quarterback somehow. If not, we're going to stink and we'll probably get the number one pick and you draft Trevor Lawrence. It's a good situation. It sucks that you're going to be terrible this year, but in 2021, you might have Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> Let's go to Nigel Adams. Next question here on NFL Daily. Can the Raiders still make a big splash in the trades or in free agency? Can you still make a big splash? Yes. However, I think that their big splashes, they're done. I think the Raiders are going to start saving up some money because you still don't know what you're paying Malik Collins. You still don't know what you're paying Marcus Mariota. And you also have to remember, you got to pay two first-round picks, which is going to cost a little bit more money. I think they're going to hang on to some cash. I think they're going to go now and really concentrate on the draft. I agree with that. I, look, it, it's been a great free agency period. Don't get crazy and overpay for a clowning or something yeah. like that. Stick to your guns. Maybe a couple more mi minor moves, but I'm with you. They've drafted really well. Focus on that. <laughs> they really wanted Byron Jones, and apparently they actually offered more money to Byron Jones. Wow. However, the Dolphins, they wanted to pay him more in the first two years. They were willing to give him 40 in the first two years. The Raiders, Jeez. they weren't willing to give up that much. Let's go to Rocky Owens, who looks like a Cowboys fan. Any trades you think Dallas would consider? Uh, yeah. They traded for Cooper a couple of years ago, but yep. <laughs> they don't trade a ton when they do. It's like minor stuff, like when they traded for Michael Bennett during the season last year. Um, I, I don't, and I don't really think they can do anything crazy until they get Dak locked up. Like, I think they're kind of in this holding pattern that they can't really do anything super aggressive until they know just exactly how much cap space they have. I don't really see any trades out there. I would have said O.J. Howard before the Blake Jarwin extension, but it seems like they're fine with Jarwin. At least they feel like they are uh, with him as the starting tight end, so I wouldn't expect anything there, Rocky. Brady Badadu, 0-5. Is Joe Flacco's career over? It should be. <laughs> it should be. Um, I still think he's going to be a backup quarterback. That's if he yeah. wants to be a backup. That's my thing. I don't, I don't know if he wants to be. Uh, we know he's got he's got a knee. Imagine problem. not wanting to make five million dollars to literally do. Look, I'm with you. Chase Daniels, my favorite player of all time, because he's, <laughs> he's made over. 30, See, I like Josh McCown. He's made over thirty million dollars, and he's played five career. He started five career games. Um, but I just I don't know how much Flacco wants to play anymore. So we'll see. He's definitely done being a starter. If that uh, if that answers anything, Brady. Next question is coming in from Dave Meredith, Dalton to Denver for a draft pick. Why would Denver do that? Yeah, I mean, you got Drew Locke. Yeah. Drew Locke won four out of his last, I believe, five games last year. So The teams that make sense for Dalton are the Patriots, if they want to stay somewhat relevant this year. Yep. The Chargers could be an option. Uh, the Dolphins say they want to draft Tua, but he's not ready year one. Stopgap quarterback in, uh, with uh, – uh, Andy Dalton. I would have said the Bears, but they traded for Nick Foles. So the teams are dwindling for Cincinnati. I don't think they're going to get a lot for Andy Dalton. So speaking of Andy Dalton, I think right now when you're talking about quarterback trade rumors, it's kind of around these two guys, Cam Newton and Andy Dalton. If you had to pick a quarterback, who would you go with? If you're going to go with Cam Newton, I want you to type C. If you're going to go with Andy Dalton, type D. I think I would go Dalton. He's cheaper, and I at least know he's healthy. Like I know what I have there. I have a serviceable quarterback oh. that's won a lot of football games. I don't know what Cam is. I don't know if he's healthy. I know if he can't move, he's not a very accurate passer. Right, at least Dalton, this? for the most part, is an accurate quarterback. If Cam Newton is healthy, does that change your answer? If he's 100%, sure, it's Cam Newton, but I don't think he is, and we don't have any evidence that would suggest he is. I'm going to agree with you, though. I'm actually going to type D for Andy Dalton because – Cam Newton unknown. hasn't thrown a touchdown in like his last seven games, and you've just seen a definite de decline. And I'm not going to go this far. I saw um, Chris Collinsworth say that Cam Newton is a quarterback that had one good year. I don't agree with that, so continue to get your votes in C or D. Super chat time. Gambit hashtag 1989. Raiders trade a fourth for Cooks and draft Lamb. I just I, – I know Cooks didn't play that well last year. I think he's getting more than a fourth. I would imagine he's going to get more than a fourth. I think if you honestly want a player like Brandon Cooks – now, the only way you might be able to swing it for a fourth is because the Rams are trying to save some money. And his contract's not great. But I mean, you're going to have to pay You're going to have to pay Brandon Cooks 16.5. I think if you really wanted to go out and spend big on a wide receiver – I mean, Brandon Cooks is talented. I'm not trying to get that twisted. 
But in such a deep wide receiver draft, I think that they're going to hang on to their money instead of going out and paying a Brandon Cooks like 16.5. Why not just draft five. Henry Ruggs? <laughs> I mean, very similar style player. I like Cooks. He's gotten a first round pick twice in trades. Yeah. To think he would be a fourth now, I still think he'd be. I mean, even if it was a third, I mean, the Raiders, they do have three uh, third round picks. Yeah. Be an option. Raider Joker, next question coming in. Do the Raiders get Cooks? Man, a lot of uh, a lot of Brandon Cooks questions. Raider, this is classic uh, Raider Nation, by the way. And you can cut me off. You know your fan base more than I do. A headline player could be traded. Let's go get him. I know all fans do that, but uh, I mean, man. we need wide receiver help. And I think anytime That's a true. wide receiver gets brought up, everyone obviously goes back and thinks about Antonio Brown. If you want actually a wide receiver that might be uh, coming back, he said he wants to play. Josh Gordon would be cheap. How about this? Emmanuel Sanders, Brandon Cooks, or Josh Gordon? Oh, I'll take Emmanuel Sanders. Okay. Good. I think he fits the offense by far the best, and you don't have to trade for him. All right, we got another super chat coming in from Daniel D. Damn, Daniel. Do the Dolphins trade for Trent Williams? <sighs> I they don't could. think they can. They have the money to, but he wants $20 million per year on his new deal. Yeah. I'm not doing that if I'm Miami. I'm not I, doing I know that they've if been willing. Yeah, but especially a team who's They're, not ready to win. Not only that, there is no way. I'm paying a player $20 million who didn't play the year before. Like, we haven't seen him play for an he's entire over year. He's 30. Yeah. Like, I know he's really good. He's a seven-time Pro Bowler, but I'm not paying an offensive lineman who's on the wrong side of 30 $20 million per year. I Bingo. Just, I can't do it. Appreciate the super chat, though, Daniel. You're the man. Josh Brown, should the 49ers trade one of their first-round picks? So the 49ers have picked 31 and pick 13. I'll say I think if they do trade a pick, it's definitely a lot more likely that it's number 31. I think they wanted to get up to 13, yeah. where they might now have to either go after another defensive tackle, maybe like a Javon Kinlaw, or a wide I think they're going to go wide receiver. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it depends. You know, this is a very loose question because what trade it for what? More picks, a player? Yeah. It just depends, obviously. Um, if they could get a receiver in return, sure, but I don't know. Like, would you trade 31 for OBJ? Oh, yeah. I, I would do that. that. I wouldn't do 13 for OBJ, but the I might do 31. The real question is, would the Browns trade? The 30 oh. For a first-round pick? Ooh. 31? Maybe. Oh, I don't know. He was a distraction know. last year, man. Yeah, that's, a, that's true. But I, I think that wouldn't be enough. So if you guys want to stay up to date on every single move during NFL free agency, please subscribe to Chat Sports. We also do a lot of shows around news and rumors. Plus, what you're watching right now is a live Q&A. Chat Sports is a very, very interactive YouTube channel, and we will not get slowed down by the big C. So please scroll on down, click that subscribe button, and turn on your notifications so you know every single time we go live. Super Chat time, Rich Payne Money. Who do you guys think? Who do you guys think of Seattle signing Bruce Irvin? Is this a sign that Clowney will walk? from Seattle after Clowney said that he wants to stay in Seattle. Um, First of all, it says, what do you guys think? I don't know how you screwed that one up twice. Um, it's not it's who I can't you read. guys think. Can't read. I actually like this move, though, for Seattle, bringing back Bruce Irvin. So you got to remember, Bruce Irvin played with the Seahawks. Yep. Part then of he played Super for the Raiders, and yep. then he went to the Carolina. Yes, you're not getting the Bruce Irvin old. that you He's had. He's getting up there, man. He's getting up there in age. But I think from a veteran leadership standpoint, plus – I also like the idea that you brought in Greg Olson and Bruce Servant both together who played on Carolina. I think that actually does help, you know, your offense and defense from a player coach sense, but you're not I don't really think it's gonna impact you, Davion Clowney whatsoever. No, I think you can get Irvin and Clowney. I don't think if you sign Irvin that means you're not bringing back Clowney. But thanks for the question, uh, Rich Pay Money. Good man. Legendary Krakota. Do you think Watson asks for a trade after what happens with Hopskins. Hopskins. Uh, <laughs> DeAndre Hopskins. He hops all the way to Arizona. Um, I, he won't because that's not who he is. I, I, I don't think. It's going to come down to money. I don't think Deshaun Watts. The Texans will pay him top dollar. Like, they should. As much as they've screwed this up, they will pay Deshaun Watts. I mean, they weren't willing to pay DeAndre Hopkins 18 to 20 well, million. Yeah, well. I mean, if you're not willing to pay DeAndre Hopkins, I, I, I understand. I hear that. what you're saying, but like, if you don't do. If you're not willing to make Deshaun Watts the highest paid quarterback, just. just just go home. Like, oh, sell the bots the are back. The bots are back. Um, I don't think he'll ask for a trade. He's not that type of guy. I think he'll stay loyal to Houston. But you got some uh, repairing to do with that relationship because there is uh, definitely some fracturing going on right now in Houston. Remember, if you see any of the bots, please type B. That's going to tell YouTube that we are going to get rid of these thirsty, thirsty bots. If anybody's thirsty for an NFL jersey, you're in luck. Chatsports.com slash jersey deal. So, 
We found these unbelievable Nike jerseys, so we're just trying to show y'all. And since this is a trade Q&A, if one of your favorite players gets traded and you get a jersey here, chatsports.com slash jersey deal, you can actually uh, get a new jersey. They, It's called Jersey Assurance, so it's going to help you out in case you do get a player that gets traded. So chatsports.com slash jersey deal. That is the link below. If you forget it, we'll put it in the comments. We'll put it in the description below. There's Saquon Barkley. That's a jersey I'd get. All right, how about this? Michael Thomas. There's another jersey that I get. Can't That's guard mine. One. I love the I love the Saints color rush jerseys. That is actually a white jersey that I'd how probably a, get. How about I'll give you one because I haven't been uh, creative. Black Julio Jones jersey. I like the Falcons black jerseys. Okay. Julio Jones is another player that I just have the utmost respect for. Yeah. The utmost. Total what about pro. Baker Mayfield? No. <laughs> what if I gave it to you for free? No. Oh, my Lord. It is not a big Baker Mayfield. Not a Baker guy. I would also turn down a Joe Flacco jersey. But you guys don't have to choose between Joe Flacco and Baker. You can just go to chatsports.com slash jersey deal. Got the Rogue Brothers. Do you think the Saints will make a trade or sign a free agent tight end? I think they're going to stay pat. I mean, Jared Cook's still there, right? Correct. He played better down the stretch of the year when Drew Brees got back and healthy. Yeah, he's not a top five tight end or anything, but he's fine. He's a top 10, top 12 tight end in the NFL. Uh, I don't think that's a, a major need for the Saints. They need a second receiver. You yeah. got Thomas, you got Kamara in the backfield. Uh, so, yeah, you need a second receiver. I don't think you need a tight end. And you also got to think about in terms of money, like what they could potentially go out and get. And there's also, like, I get that this draft class isn't very deep at tight end. But also, on free agency, who are you going to go out and get in free agency at the tight end position? I mean, it's not very Tyler deep. Tyler so. Eifert. I mean, do you really want to go out and invest in a player like probably, Tyler Eifert? Probably so not. I think if you are the Saints, you go out, you look for another reliable wide receiver. I think in terms of, like, talent-wise, an interesting player that would fit in that offense is a Tajay Sharp. But, Rogue, it's a good question. So we have some uh, notes here. Colt McCoy. He's going to the Giants. I like this move. Veteran backup, uh, he, a, a guy that uh, will be very, you know, quarterback and friendly in that quarterback room with Daniel Jones, uh, a guy who will provide, you know, uh, veteran leadership. I like this move uh, for them. I know they were in the mix for Matt Moore, who backed up Patrick Mahomes last year. I don't know what that means for him because uh, the Chiefs signed Chad Henney, so he won't be back in Kansas City. But Colt McCoy, uh, a guy who's bounced around. He's been in the NFL a lot. He's When he's played, he's played pretty well at times. Yep. Very serviceable backup. Uh, I think that's a good guy to bring into your locker room for a young quarterback like Daniel Jones. So Colt McCoy, he's going to New York. And now I want you to shout out your city. So right now we are live in Dallas, Texas. And we want you to shout out your city. Chat Sports is a live and interactive channel where we have viewers not just from the United States, but all over the world. Harrison, where did you grow up? What was your hometown? Abilene, Texas. Anybody from Abilene watching? I'd oh, be boy. surprised, but uh, you never know. So continue to shout out. I'm from Danville, Pennsylvania. Right now we're in Dallas, Texas. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. YouTube.com slash ChatSportsTV. Make sure you hit, turn on the notifications so you know exactly when we go live. Let's give some shout outs now here to some of the peeps. We got Boston, Massachusetts. I'm seeing a Houston. And Oakland, Buffalo, Utah, Santa Clara. Colton from Houston. What else we got? Sorry, I hope you're not a Texans fan. Fort Pierce, Florida from Ray Jackson. Javi's from Guadalupe, California. D Fuse Mango says Buffalo. Continue to get shout out your cities. Winnipeg, Canada. Somebody just said hey. Ooh, New York, congrats. You got Colt McCoy. Uh, Barrington, New Hampshire. Vernon, Texas. Continue to shout out your city. And remember that our name is Chat Sports. Please subscribe, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Now, this video is going to go on loop. So you're going to get, again, you're going to get a tracker here of NFL free agency. You're going to get some Q&As. You're going to see Harrison and Tom twerking. Oh. And then we're going to give out some winners and losers. Much love.